So welcome back to Room One on One, and uh, a wee pre-season special this week. Usually my guests are the opposition, but this week um, I've got a massive team and a former Celtic youth player, Declan Bunton. Well, Decky, how are you, pal? Oh, good, Scott. Thanks very much for, for asking me on. Pleasure. Um, pleasure to meet you virtually. Hopefully aye, someday. Aye, we'll aye, aye, we'll aye. Face to face next game, start of next season, maybe. Um, but all good, working away. It's the 11th of July in Belfast. So, um, <laughs> keep me the way. <laughs> you, you can imagine how we're getting on over here. Uh, fucking hell, madness, man, going by the news. It's not the news. Aaron's going off already. I can hear uh, the background. So, it's always a good start. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, so traditionally, we get the guests to introduce themselves. Just tell us all about yourself. I don't mean to be slagging or anything, but you're hardly a household name nowadays, eh? You're not not slagging at all. Um, so tell us, where's Declan Bunton from? Why do you support Celtic? Tell us a wee bit about yourself, Paul. Um, name is Declan Bunton. I'm from West Belfast, uh, born in a part called Poglas originally. Um, and then moved down the road um, to Andy Town direction and after that. Um, been a Celtic fan my whole life. I know you're probably fed up listening to that from um, people from Ireland, but we're <laughs> genuine. I, I, I'm a bit of a, what I call a Celtic fan snob in terms of, there's lots of people say they're Celtic fans, but they're not really. Right, um, good man. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> um, my, my family is immersed in... My uncle, who'd be quite close to Jim McKee, be well known in West Belfast. Um, he ran the Magalada down the falls. Mm -hmm. He was in this in 67. He would have been over with Jim Mervyn and Kipper Welch. Back in the day, they would have got the old Glasgow boat in the late 50s and 60s across to the games. Um, and then my dad, big Celtic fan, and my mother's nine brothers, Jim's one of them. So most of them were all big Celtic fans as well. And my older brother, Celtic Master from a young age. My first game, I was primary two. Um, that was the first competitive game. First game was actually 96 at Lansdowne Road. I think there were, it may have been Mick McCarthy's testimonial. I may be wrong on some of the facts, but I remember Celtic getting stuffed. Mm -hmm. And my odd memory was, I think, Terry Phelan made a score of wonder goal. Um, Terry Phelan scored a wonder goal against you. Fucking, you know you, you know your gig, you know your gigs up, didn't you? I was about five or six years old, and then my actual first game, uh, I remember from a, what about my sixth birthday, crying my eyes out to get brought to the Celtic match, and we were six kids in my family, so it wouldn't have been easy right. for a man to just to a force where, us where, where, where would you arrive then? There, I'm second youngest, Same. um, so. It would have been easy just to fork out like as it was, but anyway, like, we were never stuck. And uh, it was the last game of the season there, just on nine in a row um, on the Wednesday night at Halliday's, I think. Uh, Tommy had just been probably just been sacked. And then the last game of the season was done to United, and I was in the temporary old stand. Um, just when Jack Steen's stand was getting built, the temporary yeah, stand, yeah. if you remember. No, I'm, um, I'm trying to remember that game because you sure. Three, so as you I, see, I, to, I, Tommy Burns get a pump at the Fall Cup game, didn't he, in the semi final? So it, that was the replay, wasn't was it? Replay? So uh, the first game, I think it was on my birthday. One of the games, I can't remember if it was the first game of the replay, was the 23rd of April. Mm -hmm. you, you can check it out there, maybe, but I just remember that was my birthday. And that was the one, the big, what, what was the name of the big centre half? He scored the equaliser that day. The manager was like seven foot or something for Falkirk. For Falkirk? Ah, he scored the equaliser. And then Paul McGrillan scored the winner in the replay. Yeah. Uh, one nil. One nil in the replay. That's right, uh, aye. Um, and, and then it was, they done nine in a row, I think, a couple, a couple of weeks later. And then the last game of the season, Celtic beat uh, WNA 3 nil, And that was my first game at Celtic Park. I have a memory of Chris Hay. May right, have scored, okay. if you remember Chris Hay. I remember Chris uh, Hay. Yeah, testimonial, you're, you're testimonial, not over. Testimonial hero. Testimonial hero. He scored against United, didn't he? Maybe That's a, right, he scored twice, yeah, I think. I could be yeah, right. yeah, Paul McStay's, maybe, when they wore the grey top or something, I think, maybe. Um, so but I would have... Good memory, well done, sir. I, I'm a... You, you work out, I'm a bit of a geek when it comes class, to... Class, class. <laughs> that's the year I, I remember, mate. 
because uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't flinging bottles of wine down my throat at that point, so, <laughs> so my memory's decent, no? <laughs> well, I, I'm only, I only, I turned 31 a few months ago, so I was about five or six probably, um, but people might believe, but I do have an early enough memory of that, and Brilliant. my uncle, my, my uncle Paul took me over, my mum's brother, and I went over, me and my brother, my older brother, he would have been about 16 at the time. So I would have been six, I. I would have been my sixth or seventh birthday. And um, ah, we got the boat, the bus, the usual. Um, I can remember the big goalkeeper for Dundee United. Remember we were getting in early. Big guy in the stage. Dexter. Dexter, Eastern Dexter. European, yes. <laughs> Bosnian or something. Yeah. Was he not Dutch? Um, I thought he was Dutch. Was he Dutch, was he? I thought he was Dutch. I, I just assumed he was uh, Eastern Dexter, European. I suppose he's Dexter, huh? Uh, I think that's where, um, and I remember when we get in early, he used to do like a warm-up um, and watch that and then home that night. That was my first game at Celtic Park, yeah. Um, well, your, memory's, your memory's good. Celtic 3, Dundee United 9, 10th yeah. of May 1997. Now, now you see it all come flooding back. George Cadet, George Cadet yeah. kissed the ground and left yeah. and all that. That's yeah. right. So George Cadet opened the scoring and then uh, Chris Hayes scored in the 85th minute, Tommy Johnson scored in the 89th minute. Wow. Jeez, nah. man. Aye. Good time, I, that. So oh. you, that was 96? That was 97. 97, yeah. So my sixth birthday and I. I'm, six, wow. I, I'm the 23rd of April. But it's, it's funny, we, we were then, right? So so to let everybody know who's listening to this, your friend will be Marty Flynn. Marty mm -hmm. through your podcast and Marty's kind of he was a guy that pushed me to speak to yourself uh -huh. and I always think it's hilarious how Marty has got this wild memory right he can yeah. remember it, but he's one of the guys who puts a story behind everything and makes it all personal <laughs> you know but like we were sitting going what was your first game and I'm going fuck them I can remember no chance I mean I can remember this but Marty can tell you I was there I was hanging for yeah. this and I was doing that yep. and you're just the same it must be a Belfast <laughs> thing it's funny, like I, I can remember as well. My uncle was by me, uh, the candy would have been still there. Right. And I remember I would have understood the significance of time, but remember the sellers used to get your scarves and they used to do these like big frames of pictures. That's right. And there was one of the candy, and he had the sunglasses on, like cool out, and I said, No, I want that one. <laughs> but there's one of him blessing himself. Uh -huh. And my uncle Oh, you're getting that one, and I was like, I oh, know where we're that one. He goes, No, that one's better. At the time, I was just a kid going, ah, nah. cool, cool, ah. cool one. Then he goes, No, so I got the one where he's down, it's that, that top that year, CR Smith, and he's yeah. down, blessed himself. It's probably, it might have been thrown out once we realized this fascist leanings. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and fairness, that was doing the lane, when that was the ah, but, yeah, you know, that's yeah. funny. You're funny talking about that. That one each game against Falkirk was at Ibrox, as you, you remember, and yeah. I remember buying. A framed picture of John Paul II that game. <laughs> Cutting about the this. Frame I, 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 like the worst frames in the world, do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so they were, it, it, it's funny, like then, um, obviously weren't successful, but I even, uh, we'll come back into it later on, but my dad, my brother, I like Tommy Burns, mm. and then, so later on during the years when I was signing, I remember when he got the sack. My dad, human, the way he was treated. Uh -huh. um, just no small memories. And then after the next year, we, we stopped 10. And the memory, all the different memories that year. It's funny, one of the, the first um, memories that season was the obviously Larson gave the ball away and Chick Charnley, the 2 1. But there's a couple that stood out for me was the. New Year's game, Lambert, won the goal. And right. I can remember, it's just funny how things stick out. My granda, my mom made mints and potatoes, and I hated mints and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get me to eat it during the Celtic Rangers game. I was like, no. So, and my dad was trying to stick up for me. No, like, let him watch the game. And I was trying to, if you eat that, you can go in and sit and watch the match. Uh, uh, but never know. Lumping mints and tatties, you called mints and tatties, uh, down the throat uh, with brown, covered in brown sauce. They get and watch that game, and then I might be wrong, but Dundee United again sticks out for me because I remember there was a cup game, and we used to go and watch some of the big back in those days. Where the kids were out in the bar, and we used to go to a bar called Donegal Celtic, I don't know if you know it in Celtic Road, and that was where atmosphere was burning for Celtic games then. And there's a Scottish Cup quarter final, 
And I think Celtic got one up. Dundee United came back to two one. A big Morton Fee horseman equalised, and then they scored an own goal the last couple of minutes. It was at Tanadice. Uh, yeah, Eric, I think uh, Eric Pedersen is stuck in my head. I think he's he like a, a blonde. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty certain it was him. I remember that game as well. Go mental, and then the next one, I made my first communion the day we stopped the ten. And that's just something that, and I can remember, obviously, we, you made communion, you had to go around visiting all the, the relatives as you do, and I don't know if you do it over here, but in yeah. Belfast, you made communion, you get around this, and I have, I said, my ma has one sister, nine brothers, my dad's a family of eight or nine as well. That's a lot of people to get around when Celtic are trying to beat St. Johnson. <laughs> I remember, my dad rushing around, and we ended up, Someone telling this it was one nil after a couple of minutes, and Larson scored. And then we get down to my uncle Jim, who was talking about. It. He lives down the road. I can remember just the scene: there are massive uh, Celtic fans walking up the Springfield Road. Um, I never forget the communion <laughs> for that, and that alone. So it is. That was my sort of early memory, probably. I'll give you a tip, mate. Your, your credentials are fine. Your credentials are sweet there. But you, it's, it's, in, it's interesting you're talking about being a snobby Celtic fan. I find I, that the Irish Celtic supporters are so much hardcore in comparison to any other team in Ireland. Because you've obviously got all your Man United, but your yeah. Celtic fans should be proper supporters. There, there's people who have, I don't want to come out and just name who have played for Celtic and they're saying, oh, it's been my... And without me, I know them. And they weren't Celtic fans. Right, that's cool. never... Come on, come on. Were... The Shane Duffy's that were big. Right. Shane Duffy was He wasn't a Celtic. Now, listen, like, like a lot like of people... Celtic. Yes, they like Celtic. Mm. But they're monumented. And even Berlin Fell, I went to school with them. Um, good player for Hearts. And people are saying, oh, he's from Falls Road. He's the Celtic man. Get him in. Boise, Liam Boyce. Liam Boyce. Liam Boyce. Which is a massive, like he was in my class, we played the same school team. Big Man United fan. He used to wait. Right? There, there you go then. <laughs> he would be framed automatically as a Celtic fan. And he would obviously he prefer Celtic to Rangers. Mm-hmm. And, but he's not a Celtic. And that's not a, and that's not really trying. But it's just what annoys me is anyone from Ireland who's a Catholic or automatically in the media or Celtic fans, there's a lot of Celtic fans. I'm on Carrie Street this forum. No, it must be one of us. He's, uh, well, he's, he's an Irish down the name. <laughs> but you, re- you remember, I mean, you, you even go back to the, the Robbie Keane one. Robbie Keane uh, kind of made an arse of himself, didn't he? Because he signed uh, for Liverpool and went, this is the team I support. Man. And then like, six months later, he's at Selling Park, this is the team I support. <laughs> and the kid went, is that fucking... Well, who, who would talk to Mojo here? Fuck's sake. But um, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But yeah, um, if, you come for, if you come for West Belfast, you must be a ten. I'm not having that, see, that, No, that's <laughs> why I hate. That's why I hate Man United so much. Growing up, my street was full of Man United fans. Um, Man United were obviously winning everything. Celtic were not winning much, and they used to wave me up. So I ended up hitting Man United off the back of oh. friends in the street who, and I still to this day have a serious dislike for them. Fair, fair Based on that fact. <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got a mate for is John Little and John. Uh, you, would, would you know Jerry Little? Eh? It was his cousin. I don't, yeah, so, I don't know. So, that, so, so it's his cousin, and right. and 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 any Scotsman who who didn't kind of grow up in that like visiting Ireland constantly, they would have had it in their head. Ireland is just this place full of hundreds of Celtic fans, and you get there, <laughs> and it's no the case. No. <laughs> and, and I remember going to Belfast the very first time, and my mate John is a massive Celtic fan. Like, like you're saying, true yeah. Celtic fan. That's his only team, and he yep. despises Liverpool. You know, his mates are Liverpool <laughs> fans, despises them. <laughs> I, I, he probably would have grown up in the 80s, but in 70s, but uh, Liverpool uh, were dominating, and he probably getting a bit of abuse. Uh, jammed in. I like this. Um, but that year, um, I didn't get the any games the year we stopped the 10. And then I can remember the opening of the Jock Sting stand was against Liverpool, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And could beat 1 0. Leonardson might have scored. Even Leonardson's out who scored. I would have lost money on that one. 
Um, I, I was over for that. I can remember that would have been Joe Fingloss's year. And then I got over for one stuffing in the John Barnes year. Maybe at Aberdeen 7-0 or something. Right, okay. Um, so you'd have, been, but you'd have been new. At this point, you'd have been playing football, wouldn't you? So that kind of... I was seven, that. eight or nine. So we would have played on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, and yeah, right, you so, why, so, why don't, so why don't we take that and we'll, we'll move into that then, right? So, uh, so I'm not somebody who likes bombing themselves up. But I'm going yeah. to ask you to bum yourself up, right? So I was in I was in holiday just a couple of weeks ago in Santa Pons, and I met a lovely gentleman, and uh-huh. he loved he loved dropping a name, right? So do you know Sammy Clinging? Do you know this guy? Do you know Jerry Lee? Like, like, flinging all these names, and I'm going ah, and he said Declan Button, and I was like, well, interestingly enough, I'm duty send him a wee message and get him to speak to him. And he said, well, I used to coach that. Declan Button was one of the best players that I've ever seen, right? So I am wanting you. Without going over the top, obviously you don't want to embarrass yourself, but you were very highly rated. So tell us a tell us a wee bit about your youth football and, and what you played. And and I was led to believe you played guy as well, as well as international yeah. football. Uh, I was a big I actually played Gaelic of Hurland before football for my, my club's Lav York up in Hammerstown. Um and then the f- I played a couple of tournaments for so my family as my brother Jim would be Highly ingrained in the Magalara, they have a boxing club, but the big football club. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played a couple of tournaments for them when I was younger. But then getting down the road was a nightmare. My dad was a taxi man, so he was working late Friday nights, the all hours. So him trying to get up the next morning wouldn't have been able to get me the game. So the fellow across the street was involved in a club called Dave Youth down at Beachmount. Uh, I remember him saying, sure, Come, I'm driving down, I'll give him a lift. And that was for Brent Hagen. Um, he was in fault for them as well. Uh, a guy called Russell Allen, Brent McCauley, there's a low Collie Tolan. And I was about set, eight, probably, seven, eight. Um, and then you started the wee tournaments, I actually started out as a goalkeeper. And because right, right. I played Gaelic, it's one of them ones where he plays Gaelic, sticking my nets. Uh, He's, yeah, uh, okay, right. <laughs> and then uh, quite quickly, it didn't last. Um, I joined the field and then I got picked up by the Roman United School of Accidents over here. So at about eight years of age, they would have came, watched games and then brought you into their school of accidents in mm-hmm. Belfast, whatever, and played for every youth for a number of years and was at Roman United School of Accidents going to road tournaments. And then at about 11, 12, I remember played, went with the Roman United team to the Foil Cup, but when it started to get a wee bit serious and I won play of the tournament. We got beaten the final by Charlton. I won play of the tournament at that and the Man United guys from the actual United Academy were over and they asked me to come over to Manchester that summer. Um, I was 11, 12 years of age. So, wow. um, I, uh, actually, yeah, there's me and a guy, you probably know him called Stuart Dallas. Hey, uh, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, Connor McLaughlin, who, who's still a very close friend. Um, us three went over. Connor has a good career. He's had to retire there, played for Sunderland, but played the Euros. And Stuart's doing very well. Um, and we were 11, 12. And then from there on in, playing for AV Youth, up front striker. I had... 12 to 15, uh, probably about 15, 16 different clubs. I was back. Wow. wow. Um, but, but, but before we crack into that, mate, so, so just t- tell us, so you said you were playing up front. Okay, now, yeah. You made a forward there rather than a kind of striker. Would that be right? Uh, uh, straight eye, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. So, so yeah. How, did, how did you end up there? Like you said, obviously, played Gar. He knows what he's doing with his hands, stick him in the next night, and then you call it, obviously your talents have you've come out field. So how have you ended up up top? Was it just through chance or was it just one of the ones I want to score all the goals? I mean, what what was your attributes? Um from a young age, I was probably aggressive and a bit of a poacher at the same time, if that makes right, sense. Right, so right, okay. Uh, that puts I like to score. Um so that's probably how I ended up. And then I remember for about 13, I got moved back to midfield, center midfield for the year. Um, I can remember that just because it was aggressive and it wasn't bad passing maybe. And then the 
I'm left every youth. I was always kind of year above myself at the every youth, and I was getting boot stupid, like properly, like decapitated every game. <laughs> and I was getting fed up because it was just I was literally busted open constantly. And a lot of the teams wouldn't have been like every youth from the Falls Road Beach Mount direction. We would have been most of the teams we would have been playing wouldn't have been from. We played in the South Belfast League at that stage, and. I would have been honest, I would have got singled out for a lot of attention. And you look like a Tim. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Uh, and then what happened was that team started to disintegrate. It's sad actually a lot of the, how a lot of them had ended up now, even. But um, even that time, there was two or three boys weren't turned up and sort of. We were struggling to get 11 players some weeks. And that, that, I said, I was at that stage, I'd already been Man United, Leeds, Charlton. They were all premiership clubs. I was 12, 13 at that stage. And then Man United school actions had a link with Lisburn Youth and a lot of better, younger players playing for Lisburn Youth at the time. Mm -hmm. So they said, you can play your own age. You'll not be getting about stupid every week. Um, and I ended up going to Lisburn Youth at 13, 14, it was. Um, and that team was full of good players. Like, I yeah. uh, said, Connor, Connor McLaughlin played in that. Daniel Kearns, we've heard of him. Daniel went to West Ham, played for Peterborough. He's now he signed for Long, but a good career. Dundalk, he got played in the Year League of Ireland for Dundalk. Right, well. okay. Uh -huh. Paddy McLaughlin played for York. Jordan Hughes. Uh, something like seven eight of them all signed professional contracts. Oh, yeah. and I had some sort of career, so that's, I was playing that team as a left of youth and up front. And you were starting eh? Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it was, looking back, it was part of me regrets it in terms of, we ended up beating Team 7, 8 nil every week. And it was boring. The, I, I remember, <laughs> I, 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 that sounds, I, that might sound, come across big headed, but my first season, we won 26 out of 26 games. Um, on, and then the next year, I can remember actually going, I hope this team scores first to give us... Yeah, it's terrible. And you don't know really sometimes, the, there's not much benefit really. In what in teams? No, definitely, definitely. Huh? Um, so we used to, but in that league, there was Shankill United were good side, there was Green Island were good side. And you get the usual nonsense. Um, so you did... A uh, few incidents. I I got dogs abuse as well. It was a mix, the Lisburn Youth were a mixed team, um, Catholics and Protestants, and but everyone knew I was a big Celtic man, even back then. And I could call them everything under the sun. And used to take the bait the all time. Sadly, did you? Hi, we angry I, man. <laughs> I, I used to take the bait. Um, told to go back to West Belfast where you're from. Um, you're nothing but a thing in this and a thing in that. And if you want, right? Don't don't react. Don't react. <laughs> Next thing, an album. I only got caught twice. To be fair, I got sent off twice in that year. Um, and then, but at that stage, I was playing for the North Irish School Boys. Um, I was fourteen, playing the year above myself, and was starting to go back across to the Chelsea's Arsenal. Um, Sunderland, Fulham, said United, West Ham. So, uh, so from, from all from all them, what one kind of did wow you? Was there was there somewhere you went and you went fucking hell, man? This is there were two. So funny, at Arsenal, a nice link to Celtic there as well was uh, I stayed with Anthony Stokes and his right. dad. Oh jeez, man. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so John, his dad's John. They so Anthony Stokes moved over to Arsenal quite early. So it's 14 years of age. Usually we have to wait until we're 16 and then you go across. But if your family moves across, sets up homes, so what happened was he was that talented. Arsenal moved hit the family over and he was over 14. So I stayed with them. Uh he picked me up from the airport and looked after me anyway. Um and the guy, do you know, Johan Juru? He's a big mm -hmm. centre half. Yeah, for Arsenal. Right, half yeah. Where was he? Guy, yeah. He Swiss? stayed with him. Was he Swiss? Yeah, Swiss. Yeah, Swiss, yeah. yeah. Swiss. And uh, they were staying with him. So 
Like Stokes was away at that stage for. Oh, me, you've been well with dropping the names, haven't you? You've been well. Oh, my feet, my feet's well. killing me here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll end it now. Just I'm, I'm nah, no, no, no. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'm loving it. <laughs> so, um, I remember Arsenal going to their training ground and stuff, and I'm being, and I think the fact that it was John Stokes, Anthony Stokes, and we're talking about, you probably know their background as well. Yeah. And the real the West Belfast, and they were making me feel very welcome. Um, they went to Shepherd's Bush to watch Shabin one of the nights. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Te- I'm going. No, this is. I, I get. I get fed in here. So good. Oh, and we went to. Uh, I went to Holland with Arsenal, and Jack Wiltshire was in the team actually. Um, oh. Dropped another name. There. Um, and a guy, big guy, just things just stand there. A guy called Tom Cruise. I just remember looking back laughing. He, played, he actually ended up playing one or two games for um, Arsenal. But that's, I remember just thinking, going, these boys are different, different greatly. Mm-hmm. Like, right, um, right, okay. Me. Um, and you know, I was back and forth to Man United, to be honest with you, but I didn't, not just because I didn't like Man United, there was just that you were called Paddy a lot. And someone said, like, I remember one of the boys saying, like, it's because they feel threatened. Don't be taking it personal. Like, they're, the fact that they're calling you a party and it's not through the don't like you, I think it's personal, they just feel threatened. But I, I remember we went to Shrewsbury for uh, instead in this uh, dormitories and you were getting picked on. And yeah, I remember I ended up in a, in a fist fight with one of the boys over it. Um, and I'm not, I'm not genuinely not a fighter, but there's a certain level. I remember mm-hmm. like 14, oh, guy ben, I never, ben, ben Marshall, and he just kept calling me an Irish. This, ben and, Marshall played with my United, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah. I think he ended up with Crew or Leicester or something. And I remember me and him wrestling with each other in one of the dormitories, throwing punches. Um, and just going, I don't like, I just didn't like money. It was just something about it that I just didn't feel welcome. Um, and Sunderland was unbelievable for their setup, was probably one of the other ones that really stood out. Um, they were light years ahead in terms of their training ground and everything like that. But I'll probably say, I'm not the light years ahead. Uh, Sunderland, their, their training ground. Them and Carrington. So what year, what year uh, would that have been then? Uh, 2005, six, probably. Right, so, so the door uh, had been flinging in by that point, right? Okay, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Because um, you're hanging, uh, Sunderland probably had to invest in that to attract players. Because you know, of their location. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, were, they were struggling to get players probably because it was where it was, where they were located. Um, so uh, yeah, and I remember always going like, why why does Celtic never come? <laughs> I'm getting all these trials for all these English clubs and the Dutch they still hadn't got um and you know, you know even a sniff of them. No. Is you think um, that, I remember at that point, and you remember it as well because you, your memory and stuff like that, but you remember that Celtic were beating Man United and all that to these hot pro like see Matt remember Matt Fozzi, remember Matt Fotherham? He was kind oh, of yes, he boy, was yeah. He was like, oh, and Celtic were winning the, the race to get these Ian, guys. McGeeden, Ian, Ian McGeeden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Arsenal, everyone and Celtic beat them as well. Um, I don't recall, maybe they just don't rate me, but I remember going like, <laughs> of English clubs, no, you always have that. Well, they like, surely I'm worth a trial even and nothing. And then <laughs> Milk Cup playing for County Antrim. And my dad probably tells us better than me, but we played a game on 5 0 and I scored five and got the golden boot in the milk cup and got a phone call that night. And I clear my dad in the house from Rangers. And I bounced up from the living room and I ain't going to him. <laughs> Don't even enter it. I mean, I was trying to be civil enough to the fellow, being like, I know, like he's rang me and I ain't going, Don't, don't even. And the tenny called phone, like Rangers are looking you over. I remember going that stage. Rangers want me over in Celtic still. still uh, uh, <laughs> see, we, 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 as normal folk, we've always wondered if Rangers want to sign you, then surely Celtic must want you. Do you know what I mean? Because we've always, like, see if your, your kid come in and says, oh, I'm going to sign for Rangers, you're like, where the fuck it now, right? We need to phone people. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what? I think that's what almost happened. Right. 
<laughs> I, I, I do. I think I think that's what sort of kicked off a wee bit of. Um, I think they watched me a couple of times. Someone rang someone, and then there was a schoolboys international. Both sides, north and south, they're playing each other in the dog, and I was a year younger and was playing. And a guy called Jerry Reddy, who's a Celtic scout in Dublin at that stage, I came up and I scored the winner, I think. And then he started speaking with that. And then it was the next year, I think, they got me over for a trial. And I was about 15 at that. Yeah, I was 15. And in the same couple of weeks, I can remember being back and forth between United, Celtic, Sunderland. And... So at yep. this point, as you say, you're doing all three of them. The Man United thing, obviously tinted with your own experience of Man United and then stuff like yep. you said. Sunderland's yep. impressed you, but you're a turn. Yeah. A Celtic leading the race straight away. But at that stage, there was nothing concrete, really. Like Sunderland right. and United, it's, it, like, it's funny, people still wind me up this day. So get your, they've obviously called it right, but Donny Welbeck and me were more or less fighting for a contract with United. Um, he was the same age as me. And that's a good dude. That's a good dude. <laughs> they, they, they ended up, obviously, he was better than me. Like, there's no doubt about that. And they said, listen, I think he's he's better than you. You're not at his level, but all the best, blah, blah, blah. Um, but at that stage, I said, I was going back and forth to a few different places, but nothing really properly agreeing in place. And then... So I went to Celtic and um, finally in August 2006, probably. And did, but I remember like my first training session was horrendous, like properly horrendous. And it was just sheer nerves. I was, like on trial at Celtic and oh, um, and I stayed with, it's funny, Roddy McDonald. Do you remember big, yeah, I think his yeah, nickname yeah. Rob the Prod? Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't, know, I didn't know that. <laughs> that was his nickname, apparently, he used to call him, yeah. And uh, lovely big fella, but his wife, Helen, um, I was put up with her uh, and Diggs, and she lived in Newton Burns, and they were very close friends with Tommy Burns. Right. We got a guy called Hugh McGovern was the chauffeur then, and it's time probably going in circles, off in tangents, left, right, and centre here. No, no, bro. And... So they, they look, I stayed there and dig, but I remember just not sleeping the night before the first game or the first training session, just with sheer nerves. And Willie McStay, Joe McBride would have been taking the training. Um, and we got called John McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. And I had a stinker. And I remember after the first training session that morning, going like, I'm done here. Like, they're going to think he's, he's terrible, sent him back. Um, and then I started to relax, thankfully, a wee bit. And then we play a couple of games, I was doing okay. And then we played a friendly against like a Rotherham or someone. And one, four, five, and I scored three, I think scored three hat trick. And then I think, right, I remember the chance here. So they got me back across a couple months later in December. Uh, at that stage, the Victory Shield was going on, if you remember, it used to be the schoolboy internationals yeah, yeah. on Sky. Yeah. And we had actually, we had gone to Germany and got beat 2-1 by Germany and I scored in Germany and off the back I had got a few, uh, mainly Sunder at, at that stage and still nothing from Celtic in between. I was going, I'm in a bit of bother here. Still just, just waiting in Celtic. I was just, I'll be honest, I was just waiting in Celtic and holding off. And, and then they got me finally back over after the fixture sheet in December. And I was, I'll be honest with you, I was shopping. I, I remember playing Kilmarnock on a Sunday morning at Barrowfield. Um, I had a stinker. I had an absolute stinker. And we're going, that's me done. Like, forget about it, Celtic. Like, you're, you're, you may, you're going to an English club, um, all being well. And didn't hear anything from them. Well, what do you think, what do you think kind of went happen? Were you too much pressure on yourself? Were you trying yeah. too hard? You weren't relaxed? Well, I hundred percent like that, that. That was it in a nutshell. And even when I got there, I'm probably will get to that stage. Suffered similarly, right. um, but but I would say it was definitely. I was just, I couldn't attach myself trying to play, um, mm. and I knew because sometimes you're so desperate that it does affect your performance, and, and there's obviously scientific. Um, evidence for that as well, but I think that was one of the. Do, yeah. do you think? Do you think that see? 
to equate my non-football experience to yours is like, see, I got to the point that I love football. Right? As you can tell, I love football, same as you. And I wasn't a great football player. So see, when I played football, I was shitting myself constantly. As soon as I walked on the park, there was no enjoyment. If I didn't start well, and I remember a guy, you ever heard of Chael Sonnen, the, the old UFC fighter, Chael Sonnen? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Chael, Sonnen. Chael Sonnen said on his podcast, you would not believe how much stress takes out of your body. If you're stressed, you just, it, it weakens you. You've not got the yeah. same, you can train all day, but if you're stressed, you're feeling drained. And I can yeah. imagine you putting all this external pressure on yourself and it's probably hurting you. 100%. Like that. And when you look back and like, when people ask me for some like there's kids now going on trials and like they're mad or jump culture like here, we just such is going across. If anything, would you help them and say, do this, do that? And like, do the opposite of what I and I was. And you're like, you look back, like, obviously, if I at that stage, like, I'd already had, as I said, no Premier League, you're going, and I still think I'm not going to be good enough for Celtic. I'm going to make loads of mistakes here. I was in my head, but if I wasn't Celtic, I know I wouldn't have gone in with that mindset. But just because, and you know, even the bar feed, you can see Celtic Park in the background as well, mm -hmm. way on up, and you've just all that emotion playing with you. Um, and I was still at that stage going back and forth to loads of games. I was still getting across five or six games a year at that stage. Like, really? Um, aye. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Yeah, yeah. Um, hot at you, aye, from the Martin O'Neill era, um, and then Strachan would have just took over. Um, a couple of years at that stage, and I still would have been coming back, back and forward, like for on the boat on the supporters bus for games, like. Um, and then during that, say, I'd be February '07. I had agreed. West Ham offered me a contract, um, and between them all, I thought that'd be the best. So everything agreed. Same did, for West did, Ham. London, did London give you the? I, I, I could do no, that. No, no, I, I, that London. It was actually in spite of London, to be honest with you. Right, okay. Um, I didn't, I wasn't first in London, but it was West Ham, the academy, the amount of players that they'd always brought through, and the reputation. And they gave people a chance, yeah. yeah. That was, uh, and so everything had been, had been agreed there, and that was February, March time, probably. And then I... Again, birthday present, 16th birthday present, never forget it. That's a selfie, I hadn't heard anything out of the water. Um, 16th birthday, Celtic, away to Kilmarnock, uh, 22nd of April, 2007. And it was the day we had to win to win the league, we nearly threw it away. Do you remember Dundee United, two each? Um, or was, or was it one each or two each? We threw it away almost, not threw it away, mm -hmm. but it took us three weeks Aye. They win it. We, we could have won it in February. Only I think Hugo Akiog scored. That's right. The all he kicked. And then we get beat by Falkirk, I think. We missed the Craig Beatty missed the penalty. Casper Schmeichel. And then we dropped we dropped another couple of points and it had gone all the way to in April. And I, I, I mean, so remember what I said had, remember what I said earlier on. At this point, I've started drinking wine, so I'm going to rely <laughs> on your memory now, right? <laughs> so, but in Kilmarnock, we got some of that, got some over um, on the bus, and there's a there's a wee bar, it would have been an early kickoff. There's a wee bar in Kilmarnock, it was down near like a, like a shopping centre, like a, like a black on the outside, like a shabin. And I can remember being inside and we were over early. I had to get the early book just to, to make sure we got it in time. And the tunes were pumping, as you can imagine. And bear in mind, the next following week, I was due to fly to London for a West Ham game, be in the stadium, everything sane, family over, blah, blah, blah. And my dad gets a phone call and goes outside and then calls me out and goes, uh, Celtic want to sign you. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was only like, so you're in the whole, and he's like, probably a stupid question, but what do you want to do? You've give, but I've been saying, like, you've give people your word, you're going to sign, you're due over next week, but listen, I know what, I, I think I know what you're going to say, but have a think about it anyway. So we're in this, back into this bar, 
Um, and I can remember my dad saying, like, Jerry, listen, we're actually at the game here. If you want to meet Tommy or something, <laughs> with any excuse really? to try and get something. Wow. And he's like, no, I, th- I, th- I think Tommy's busy. <laughs> 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 so that's that was when Nakamura scored the last minute when we were in the month. Yeah, yeah. Um, a bus home. And then I that next week, there was a tournament up in Balamina and it had like USA, Switzerland, uh, Germany, Belgium, all playing. And I was playing for uh, North in it. And they, so, cut long story short, Celtic says, listen, we'll give you a week. Uh, but I had to tell West Ham this. And West Ham were like, listen, is this is a, a money move. You're saying, so I remember being 16, stuck in a hotel up in Chimney Corner Hotel or something. And they were ringing me back and forth. And are you trying to get more money out of us? And I was like, listen, this, <laughs> I'm actually doing myself in real, I know I'm only 16, aye, but like aye. English Premier League, and I oh, don't believe you, blah, blah, blah. Um, listen, you're saying West Ham, blah, blah, blah. And in the scout, a guy called Eamon Brophy, I think, is lovely fell. He's like, listen, we'll buy you two season tickets for Celtic as part of your contract. Now that's <laughs> your main reason. Because like, I, I've tried to explain them, this, this is nothing to do with finance, nothing. This is my like, heart. Tell me after, like, this is my dream. And I remember I was like, their final, listen, you get two season tickets and we'll get you back and forth to games if you want. And I was going, nah, like. I, it's so awful, the it? Have you heard I, it? That's so <laughs> awful, man. <laughs> and I remember just going, like, if I was to say, no, it's like, jeez, like. It never, never let um, mm-hmm. with regrets. So that was the end of the Monday night. I remember playing against Switzerland or something. And then the Tuesday morning, I was decided, listen, yeah, we're going Celtic no matter what. I remember my dad going, by the way, we're not negotiating with Tommy Burns. Like, whatever you get, you're getting offered is <laughs> is what you're getting offered, not that. Did you, did you, would you have had an agent at this point? No, 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 not that. So, so you, you, and your, you, and your, you and your dad walking in? Um, so that was a Tuesday, and then Tuesday morning, and then they were just like, right, you want to come over this weekend? Just on the phone, it was done, like, is that what you're offering? Yeah, okay, no bother. Um, and they organised flights for us to come over that weekend, uh, Saturday morning, and then the trophy was getting presented um, against Hard Charge Speed, it's 3-1 that day, actually. Mm-hmm. And Lubo presented. I uh, Paul McStay and Lubo. I put, Lubo made a percent of the trophy. But Paul McStay was there as well. Saw the photos and was oh. it a, a crack in the gate? It sounded like I'm name dropping. So we do over that day. I'm loving it. Say, say, saying the contract, right? But so that was uh that was April. That what, was what did you say? April. What 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 had you signed then? I, I don't mean money wise. What did you say in so, terms so of generation and stuff? I, I sent a two-year deal instead of a three-year deal at West Ham. Like, wow, wow. Like, like, it, it's madness looking back, mm-hmm. probably, um, but it is what it is. Um, but it's uh, like the way it worked. You, in Scotland, you go into like a professional contract at 16, mm-hmm. where in England, you had to be 17. So you had to be like a schoolboy, a scholarship, uh, until you're 17, then you sign the pro. Um, but so that day, it was 28th of April, and... Came over was met Tommy um, in the Menzies Hotel. He put us up and signed in the Menzies Hotel in the suite with Tommy, and and then gone to the game in the number seven restaurants. Um, we didn't know what we were getting quails eggs. I'd never heard of quails <laughs> eggs. <in the> <laughs> 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 we never felt as out of place. In <laughs> Would your dad take a pint? Aye. Aye, more, so, more, more, aye more good than man. No, no. It, it obviously, it doesn't mean son of me, didn't he? But I just, I like the idea that my boy's just saying, I met Tommy Burns, oh. I'm at Selic Park, and I'm having oh, a pint. Oh, brilliant, oh, man. Oh. That's so class. After the match, we get brought into the manager's office, Stragon, and he would have had guests and whatever. But so Lubo was there and Paul McStay got the pictures taken. But introduced to Lubo. And but two months beforehand, I was in Belgium playing a tournament. Uh, 
and we were playing Slovakia, no on school boys. And I'd done okay and got man of the match against Slovakia. And Lubo was manager of the Slovakia team. So he been there, but the day before, I'm in the lift, and we're all staying in the same hotel. I'm in the lift, and I this fella stamps at me in the lift, me and a guy, Connor Devlin, goalkeeper. And I go, surely that's not Bibo. <laughs> sure. He's going, the fuck's Lubo? I was like, ah, no. <laughs> and it's cringy looking back. But I remember we got outside. And then he walked away, and I mean, I shouted, oh, Lumo! And he turned around, and then we started doing the Ed Stark. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started doing it in some street in Slovakia. And I actually found the photo a couple of weeks ago. So I then got the photo taken, me wearing an Northern Ireland tracksuit, Lumo wearing a Slovakia tracksuit. And, uh, and then so couple, transfer a couple of months later, and I'm getting signed. And one of the guys said, Can we get a photo? I know it. He never recognized me. Go, Northern Ireland striker, good signing, and I was like, "What are you doing?" Ah, but that was the best. That was my best moment ever. When Lubo and a good picture of me, Lubo and my man, but uh, and then I got pictures with Paul McStay that day, um, and striking and everything. So it was, that was a good day. That was a good day. Oh, that was the end of April, and that That's was for me to move over in July, start of July. That's um, a fantastic 16. story. Fantastic. Huh? Oh, that's, that's better. Know. That was better than I expected that because I don't think <laughs> let's find out what happened when he's saying, but that's that's class, man. That, <laughs> that's exactly what you want is a 10 minute. I, oh, jeez. Like, but I, I even look at we I met a few of the boys from that trip there not that long ago, and they were they all thought I was a loser because I love and it, that time was we were Celtic were playing AC Milan as well in the Champions League. Do you remember the last 16? Mm-hmm. Two nil each. And Kaka scored an extra time. It was that week that the way leg was when we were in. And I remember the next day trying to talk to Lubo as if, like, here, did you see the game last night? And he's just going, But um, I know, good, good time, good memories looking back. And then That's moved, oh, got my GCSEs. And then moved across the start of July. So you, so you finished, you finished school as well. That's good, man. That's good, yeah. aye. Excellent. Um, right. So, so you've signed up with Celtic. Now the hard work kind of starts. What was it like? I mean, did you hit the ground running, or did you have that with you inside your own head? Because for for everything I've looked at, you done pretty damn well up until the injury started. But I was led to I, believe I was led to believe that the injuries were always kind of sugling about. Is that right? I so like I I had grown up because I was playing Gaelic hurling football at every age group above myself, my own age. I probably had started some issues and I had growing problems. And then, but there's never any screening or medical done before I went to Celtic. And then, first day of pre season, I run the bleep test till I almost stop fit, like my fit, because I did play so many other things. Mm-hmm. I was fit. And first week, grand, everything's going well. And then, just, I'd never been sort of full time footballer before. So, sort of, I'm a groin was like someone kept the intensity me. turning up. And the intensity, that the, yeah. Like morning, night, morning, night, or uh, morning after inside. And then I remember, like they said to me, Listen, you're not running properly. You can see it. You need to sit out, ask me what the whole crack was, explain. I said, Listen, six week rehab, but this is the first pre season. Um, it six happened. Week rehab, and you're just in the door. That must have been a killer for you. Ah, uh, uh, it was, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And, but I was able to get back and. Before the end of this pre-season, got back training and playing. I was doing okay in training and got brought across to an under-20 tournament that would have been in Turin. And Paul Caddis, you were allowed to over his players. A couple of good, a good story actually from this one. And we, uh, Corinthians, Regina and... I can't remember. A, a local Italian team that would be 24 0. That's what it was. <laughs> and, and, but you said the context it was under 20, and you were allowed two overage players. And our two overage players were Charlie Grant, you probably mm-hmm. heard of Charlie, yeah. and Paul Caddis. 
Mm-hmm. So that's six. And I wasn't expecting. There was a couple of trialists. I remember Italian trialists. John, John Park was there. And he had brought these in as trialists, striker. And I was only really going as someone to pull out injury. I called up and started to do okay and train over there. And John McLaughlin was the manager. He was like, I want to get you in, but I have to play these trialists, whatever. Trials didn't turn out to be much good. And were, after one or two games were done, last group game, playing Regina and the winners get through to the next stage. So travel to the, the, the ground and just before kickoff, I was on the bench. They asked Mark Miller, sorry, Mark Miller was the other overage player, you're like three. Remember Mark and, Miller, uh, Regina guys said, uh, we want to see your passports of every single player to prove you don't have more than three overage players. Right, okay. And the guys are like, we've never been asked for this. Let's be honest, like, any chance. Our old passport hotel, it's an hour away. No, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, we translated. I never forget his name. Ernesto. Or, oh, you have to you have to play the game. You have to get passports. Came to an agreement anyway that if we had the passports by half time, play the first half, had them by half time, they would come on and they would play the second half up being well. So amongst all this commotion, um, Ernesto, the translator, in and out of all dressing rooms. Right, match is starting 15 minutes. John goes to get the set pieces up. Where's all their set pieces? All taken down off the wall. All the tactics. <laughs> John, fucking, John took no prisoners. Like, I, mean, I bet you it's that wee bastard Ernesto. <laughs> <laughs> Walks out of the dressing room, or it is, bold Ernesto, having all our sheets to the Regina. Oh, no. Swear to almighty God. A piece of and, shit. Right. Oh, so Ernesto got told no one certain times where to go. So it was a tunnel. There's actually, I remember the Celtic few, you'll find it somewhere in our case, did a, an, a, an interview with Mark Miller about this. And there's a bit of mouthing going on. And we had the Celtic tune pumping my iPod in the dressing room. And I remember the tunnel, and we just started singing Hail, Hail. And I never forget being like, I'm here two months, walking up a tunnel away. <laughs> no, the, the whole the whole Lisbon Lions, obviously. Aye, oh, no, very no. good. I, and, I, and Mark Miller was at the top of his voice as well. Mark's from Port Glasgow, you tell like, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess it's brilliant. This is great. Like, uh, ended up, Mark was all pumped up. He got sent off after 10 minutes. <laughs> they were 2 0 up. Down to 10 men, 2 0 up. Passports came half 10, get back to two each. I came on and scored the winner um, for 3 2, and we got us through. And like, I just remember being like, this is, this is unbelievable. This is life. And we played Atlanta. Um, Atlanta beat us, I think, in the semi final, whatever it was, 2 uh, 1. But that was my first real experience. You, you felt like you were, you were out oh, away in Europe. You're, I could be, I could do okay. And for the first few months, I did. I did do okay. I was playing under 19s when I don't think they expected me to be playing under 19s. I thought it would have been under 17s. Um, me and Richie, Richie Terrell. Was the only... Richie Terrell, a good player as yeah. well. He's a good Yeah, Richie's a good, good friend of mine. Like me and Richie were the same age. We came over together. Um, and me and Richie were really the only two at our age who were playing under 19s and reserves. Mm-hmm. We, were, we were pushed right up quite quickly. Um, were, you, were you scoring goals at this point or was it just a, um, in general you were impressing your play? The reason I ask that, so, sorry, the reason I ask that is I remember when Simon Donnelly came through, there was a guy called Dougal McGarrison who was in the Celtic mm-hmm. Reserves, and Dougal McGarrison was scoring bag loads of goals. Mm-hmm. Simon Donnelly was seen as a player. He was seen as a, and that was he got this, the, he yeah. got the jump. And I'm just wondering, is that a case the same as yourself? They're looking beyond uh, goals. I, would, I, I, I probably wasn't an out and out. I was physically, probably wasn't capable either at that, but. I what probably helped was uh, there's a guy Tony Taylor was the assistant there. You probably heard Tony was on the fringes of the Lisbon Lions right. back in the day, and he moved to Canada. I'm to Canada in the seventies, but Tommy got him back to coach the under 19s that year with John McLaughlin, and he always says is that you want to be here, and he used to always point me out he wants to be here, and mm-hmm. that's and that sort Tell of is more my attitude. That. It was my attitude and running about and looking like a curd probably helped. Um, and I was, I held the ball up. I was more of a, at that stage, get it up to me. I held it up. Outweighed, got in the box. Like, was, that was, 
which you know, even even in today's game, is is essential in a game, isn't it? See somebody, oh, yeah, yeah. somebody who can who can bring the ball. See, if it bounces after you and you straight back, you're the worst guy. What do we do? Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and that stage there were big Kelly and Sheridan had moved up to the first team, so there's no real out and out striker either. Um, and then we were down, and that was my got my eyes open in Kilwinning playing fucking Kilmarnock under 19s. And I can remember warming up. I was on the bench and getting dogs abuse, warming up. And all there was the results there and Union Jack flags. And one of the boys was from Irving. So he said, come on. And he says, listen, welcome to Kilwinning. Like, this is, he played for Celtic. He was on the bench. He goes, this is Kilwinning. And I was like, right, lovely, lovely Ursher. And we were 1-0 down. Did you see that naked of us? Yeah, he's from Kilmarnock, actually, Cali, mm-hmm. yeah, but he, he would have been on that, on that, so he would have been back up with the, he's back up with the first, first, first team at that stage, um, this is under-19 league, Yeah, and he, we were 1-0 down, basically, Danny Lafferty, equalised in like the 92nd minute, and then I scored the winner in the 94th minute, and guy, you probably, you'll probably definitely know Frank Connor mm. and Tommy were at the match, and... Uh, I remember they pulled me afterwards. I, I got brought on at half time and, and did okay. And they were like, you're the reason we'll get back into that game and blah, blah, blah. And Frank Connor, you probably know, where are you from, son? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, we should be scouting more from that neck of the Ah, brilliant, man. Um, so that, and it was, that was around October, November. Um, and I was, I was, I was, I was going okay all the way through there and it was probably up to February and I started my groins were just killing me and I mean properly I was taking painkillers to train every day at that really? stage yeah oh. even to try I was hating it I was, and, I was my own uh, fault well there, there I was going to ask you there I was going to ask you were you engaging the club with regards to that because I would dare say you were over an age where I just want to play it doesn't matter it's only fuck, it's only a wee bit of pain I'll just play I'll just play whereas the, the, they were aware of it but probably at that stage, the physical, like, weren't to the extent, I probably wasn't telling them how sore it mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I, I was doing all right at that stage. And, but it, it goes back to even the pressure. I remember my first game against Rangers, though. I genuinely got about two hours sleep. I remember I was starting was at Murray Park. We drew three each in the end. Not surprisingly, John Flack got a fiery dodgy penalty against against me. <laughs> um, uh, what was he like uh, to play against? He was the, he was the king of the goal. Uh, that he, he, he was. I would have played against him even for Scotland, even before I went there. Mm-hmm. And he was at that level. He was different class. At that he was, like, he was physically physically stronger than everyone as well. Um, I was good in the ball, and I he, he, he was very good, I must say. Um, but, yeah, it was there. Uh, I struggled at times. Those games, I, I do remember, I kicked the ball out for a corner in the first tackle. And thinking, this is what I need to As a stress was from a striker, I just went through the ball, and all I had to do was turn, and I was away. And I remember I'd get a Tommy and John McGuff and give me a rolligan for it. And there's me, and I it just learn you learn as you go along. But I remember going, I ain't getting stuck in here. First tackle, I but the corner for Rangers. But now all I had to do was take the ball and go and attack. And you it's like looking back, you're going, that's stupid. Uh-huh. And they were they were aware that I was getting myself too too pumped up, and I had a stinker for I was horrendous the first half, and then I was grabbed at half time going. If you don't wake up, you're getting you're, you're coming off. off. Like because you're you're useless to us, you're gonna you're gonna get sent off type thing. Um but you're 16, you're playing under 19, Murray Park, first game against them. You're in the jersey, yeah. Uh, like, all, all, all the cliches that, that go with it, like, but it doesn't do you any real benefit to a certain degree. And in those type of games that actually kind of I think it helped in the games against your Kilmarnics and your Mullerwells. But those games sometimes you need that wee bit of that mix of composure. Oh, that, that's, you're obviously up against a, a higher standard as well, and they'll, yeah. use, they'll use that against you. Because no matter yeah. you're saying you're all 16, there's still going to be that one guy who's got the smarts in front of everybody else, isn't he? And he'll just they'll three years over me. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I, yeah. I forget about that. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we were 16, 
Um, me and Richie was, would have been the only two even the dad still playing. I would have been guy. We Kev Colley still playing, and Jamesy Forrest. Believe it or not, Jamesy was on our team, same age as himself. Nicest fellow in the world, by the way. It really annoys me the criticism he gets. But um, he, Jamesy was not. Jamesy was on expenses. Right. For me, Richie, right. uh, R- Jamesy only was on expenses and only played under seventeen. Didn't get a sniff of under nineteen that year. I'm talking about my first year there. Just get on with it. Um, and it was only at the end of that first year he got a proper contract but he was coming in from Presswick on expenses mm-hmm. which was probably only about 90 quid a week <laughs> Jeez. but I'm not getting a sniff and it's pro- like I mean that in a good way that he just got on with it and, and he showed the development as well just, um, just to, to ask you about your experiences then right? so you spoke about when you went Man United and they kind of had that that bully culture that you've heard of, and and yeah. I don't know, I don't know if you watch the the open goal, the side fairy stuff. I, I, I bet I'm all of that. Yeah. So so he maintained that the bully culture, for want of a better word, is kind of prime for growing people. What was it like? Yeah. What was it like at your point at Celtic? Because I can't imagine James Forrest would have been in about fucking, if especially if oh. he's just a wee quiet mouse. And he was a quiet, genuinely one of the nicest fellas. Quad fella, um, that it probably was turning. I used to get dogs abuse, like and a good like my nick again. I'm not. They called me Bruce Willis was my nickname. Die hard, right? That that was my nickname. Um, you cut about in the vest. I no, the fuck no, just because I like, they thought I was a loser because I used to go and watch home and away Celtic games. They were like the first team, really. So it was it's for die hard, like your die, die hard fan. And That's I, terrible. I, I never put that together there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember, like, I'm not, I, I, that, that's the bit I did slightly struggle with. Like, I would go to, I would jump on the train. I can remember going to watch on a Sunday morning Gretna at Fir Park on my own. And you go in the train Killen. the next day. Chris, Chris Killen, Killen. That's Donald, and then Chris Killen scored two. Yeah, yeah. They scored a, a free kick that Boric was all the show for. I remember in the first half. I remember going to tell the boy, oh, I was at the first. Why are you going to watch the first team play at so Shatner for? Was it was there nobody else? Nobody else within your group, your age group, nobody? Re- Tinser, a guy, Michael Tinser, and then a wee guy. Him, yeah. He played the uh, and stuff, lad, didn't he? Uh, Morton, hmm. um, good, good lad. And then... The year after that, two we uh we Keatsy, James Keatons and Lewis Toshney. Right, okay. After, but they weren't in that first year. They weren't. There was a good few Rangers fans were in that sort of first batch of my year, and I, that's genuinely the thing I struggled with. And Sai Furry was the biggest wind up merchant. He was always <laughs> a, a, he was funny with it, very funny. But he would have had me tortured in a in a good way rather than they they would have wound me up. About he'd, have been, he'd, have, he'd have been older as well without getting that. He was a few years older and mm-hmm. always in the physio room, same time as me as well. So, but he he would have done it in a way that made you feel welcome and part of the crack, but wind you up but, at the but, same r- time. Rip you apart. Oh, aye. Like, aye, aye, aye. Typical, <laughs> as you say, it's a typical Scottish Irish thing, isn't it? You don't yeah. say hello to somebody, you're like, aye, you. aye, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, that was the oh, I genuinely only thing I struggled to get my head around was that, and they give me a bit of stick for going to college. Really? So I, 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 um, I, I just, I, 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 so, and I, I couldn't, like my man, dad don't have a qualification to their name, but all, and where we living in Belfast, probably their generation. It was driven home. You need to get a, to get a job, education. So they they had to leave school at 14, 15. So there's six of us, and they drove in that we need to get an education. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So is it? I did well in my GCSEs, whatever. And just you just never know. And so I did an English hire, part time while I was. So you got a you got a Wednesday morning to go and do um, whatever you want to do, and I did English. Um, I remember the boys going, fucking do a computer course. Click a button and don't even go half the time. No one cares. And then they were going, do you actually go? And I was like, I don't know. 
accent ways up, will you? Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want, I'm not naming their name, but I remember reading an article of one of them in an interview there not like two or three years ago saying that he used to get boys abuse for going to college and they had to retire young. And his biggest regret was not going because he, he's a fool now because he thought he was a hard man that didn't need to, to, to go it, and make fun. I don't know what it would be like in Ireland growing up, but certainly I remember at that time, if, if you went to school and you actually worked hard at school, you were a snob. Doesn't matter where you could snob. From, uh, like, uh, we, we, we were called fruits. You're a robot, you fruit. <laughs> <laughs> That type of it's, it's perfectly not crack, but that was and I, I, that was the only two things I remember going like fuck, leave me alone. Like you're giving me abuse for supporting Celtic. Aye. I'm going to I, I didn't do, I wouldn't say sh- cool things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't say sh- struggle, but I, I would have got a lot of abuse. Probably good nature in a way, but. Would it you, started would annoying you, me. Would you begin it back though as well? Like, I, I you sound, you I sound like you've got a better part about you. <laughs> I, would, I would bait back as well, um, which probably didn't help the way in the play for Kiel. We'll get something out of him. We'll get it going. I will get it going. So that, I, that, that cut, and to be fair, Aidan McGeady was brilliant with young people as well. Really? See that culture that you talk I, about that were, were Cypher, I always ask on, on his interviews, and Aiden would have tortured me, for example, but in a good natured mm-hmm. banter about Celtic and um, those type of things always being injured. And But it was a, it was a way of making you feel welcome, of course. but again, keeping you on the ground at the same time. Um, and other than that, the only ones I can really remember going, he's a prick, um, would have been Gary Caldwell. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, in terms of like arrogance mm-hmm. of treating us younger ones of like there, there's 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 no bother but I was on about like not the bullying culture such but that know your place type thing. I I, I get all that, but he had an arrogance that I didn't like. Um just one example I remember him just dumping about twenty pairs of boots, cleaning them. I, I stood here and clean not, not that it bothered you, like but it was the way you go about it. And other than that, at that stage, maybe it was starting to phase out from the first team. But there wasn't too much of that sort of bullying culture, if you want to mm-hmm. talk about. Um, but I don't, I, know, I, I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of dangerous word, saying bullying, isn't it? I, because yeah. what, what one person's bully is yes. another another person's funny man. You know what I mean? hundred percent. I'm like... It's how you interpret it as well and what way it's done. Like, I think I've been savvy enough to know he's actually making me feel welcome by giving me abuse here. Part of the group. Right? Like, you're, uh, you, like, it took, maybe takes you a while while other people think, oh, he's picking on me rather than the other way about. Um, but no, like, at, at, that, at that stage, that was 2007 and 2008. You remember with... The, the league was almost done. It was done. And then Tommy became sick. So my first year. Um, and and then I, I, I got, at the end of that year, we, we didn't win the league. And the Scottish Cup, this is under 19, sorry. With the Scottish Cup uh, final at Hamden. And John Flack scored a one to go last kick of the game to bring it to extra time. And he, we could beat an extra time, but just even I know everyone eulogizes about Tommy, like, but on the Friday before that game, big guy in training took me, cleaned out, and uh, big Lawrence got him, tore my ankle ligaments. I was told you're out for six to eight weeks. This is the Friday, and the cup final was the Wednesday. And I remember just sitting, crying my eyes out, going hand in park, Rangers, the cup final. I'm out, and Tommy died a couple of weeks after this, rang me on like the Monday and was like, we man, don't you worry. Peter Grant in the cup final 95 was told he was out <laughs> and he, he was all right to play. That could be you. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't have, like, it just, it just sums a man up. There's other things that like, 
couple of times he gave me lifts and he was going way out of his way to, to do it. Um, and I ended up, I strapped it up, took painkillers, and they're like, you'll get about half an hour out of you. So it came on, in the early 60th minute, it came on, fucking game goes into extra time. The last, no subs left, the last 15 minutes. You're just hobbling a bit. <laughs> I'm hobbling a bit, like an agent. Um, and then I was due, I was waiting on an operation at that stage as well. I was playing through the rest of the season to get my first hernia operation and said that would solve the groin problems. Um, and then that was the start of just nightmare after nightmare, to be honest with you. Um, right. Right. Before before we move on to the injuries, this talk this, this kind of name drop again, right? So as if I as I'm led to believe. You've already spoke about Aiden and Aiden's looked after you. You you dealt with Gary Colby and stuff, but you were training him in the first team at points as well, eh? Ah, uh, a couple a couple of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what uh, was that like? What was that like again for a proper Tim standing my, standing uh, there? I, I can I can remember getting used for a sad piece going to play playing Hans at Ibrox and. I can remember just the turning round and Nakamura was whipping in free kicks and you're going, Jesus Christ. Like, like what? I <laughs> do <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it, it wasn't, I, I was hurt. I, was, I, may, I may as well not have been there. Genuinely may as well not been there. Um, Over, I was, overawed or just? Uh, like, yeah, just overawed being like, there's, there's but like boring chat, like my Bebo. That was the day of Bebo. Bebo. My Bebo. <laughs> my Bebo was a shrank yard or borage before I sat in for Celtic. And there he was, and there me, and I'm just looking, going, where's the holy goalie? Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a negative, though, in terms of your actual career. I How think so? in that. I was too overawed to be able to be ah there. yes yes do, so do right to 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 talk to look back at yourself right because obviously you're a young guy and you've been you're there with your heroes and you're you're a bit starstruck whereas maybe somebody like Aiden wouldn't they have been Aiden would have no. been I deserve to be here I'm as good as you guys but. In terms of quality, right, again, I'm, I'm wanting you to kind of bum yeah. yourself up. In terms of quality, if you if you forget the injury for two seconds, if you could have go out of your own head, do you reckon you could have got to that level? Nah. Honestly, nah, nah, nah. I, I, like, listen, there's people making careers playing international football that sometimes it do it kills me. Mm -hmm. I go like, right, fling me a couple. I, I don't want to. I, I would. Nah, I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. You could give it. Give it one. He's a big guy, big Josh McGinnis. If you remember him playing, yeah. yeah. Josh made a good fair play to him. He's made a brilliant career for himself in the championship and played in the Euros. And great big, brilliant big fella actually. But well, well Greg. I, I never, I, Will Greg only get actually called into Northern Ireland because I get injured and there's no other strikers, to be honest with you. And Steve Beaglehold found this boy who's great granny's auntie <laughs> born, and got him in. And that's how he he played. And even as I say, like, Jamesy, and there's other people who are more talented than me in that team who have made okay careers, to be fair. But at that stage, say 17, 18, James, he couldn't have laced their boots, probably. Really? But, or maybe James, he didn't get the chance just, but I mean, I mean this in the most biggest compliment to James himself, in that where he's taken himself from, mm -hmm. having the career he has is unbelievable, and the injuries he had as well. Um, but if people develop at different times, sometimes a wee, bit of, a, wee, a wee bit of luck comes into the bargain. Um, I, I I don't think I always say on him. I don't think I would have had the emotional uh, capabilities to play for Celtic first team. I don't. Right. Okay. That's uh, that's, uh, that's very big of you to say. It's very big of you to say. Um. I I wouldn't be able to cope. I, I, I genuinely 
Like, if Celtic first team could beat now, like, still got it. The only time I row with my missus is when Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> so like, if I'm involved in that, I I, I genuinely don't think we would go again good enough either. I don't know. I was doing okay until the injuries kicked in, but then like a lot of people do okay, 16, 17 and, and go elsewhere. Um I do I would like to think I might have been able to have some sort of decent career potentially. But, right, well, well, well you're, you're touching on that, so we'll, so we'll get into it then. You'd already touched on that the injury started playing up. You were saying your groin, they sent you for a hernia operation to hopefully alleviate the problems, but numerous, numerous ops, nothing seems to be working. So what, what happened there? So that hernia actually, for whatever reason, did seem to, to, to release pain for a while, and Tommy had died, Chris McCart had come in, um, sort of over like, the youth and went on a get back play. My pre season had the best pre season of my life, to be honest. We went to Belgium, beat Spurs, made it beat Milan, and I, I think I scored something like 10 goals in four or five games. Um, away all, up of the reserves, uh, I can remember done the 4 4 playing against the United and Paddy, Paddy McCord at that stage had joined and now. And become mates with them, and I remember sort of party, playing the party in the United and stuff. And you're going right. I'm doing well here. Um, went away. I remember international, scored two against Norway or Sweden, and like I played England in, in a European qualifier. Did did well there. And the beat us two one, but I think I had a decent enough game against Jack Rodwell. Victor Moses, Henry Lant, that they're a cracking team point. Mm-hmm. Um, England have always get really, really strong oh, the teams, aren't they? Always. Yeah. Oh, like some there, there was something like the team we played had was worth like twenty million in transfer fees. <laughs> under eighteen, like, it was ridiculous. Chelsea were signing up a lot of the boys from two, three million. That's it. Spurs, John Bostock, really them boys, and. Um, I remember going like, geez, I, I'm, things are going well here. I was about autumn. And then we went to play, Celtic played, you know, got United in Champions League again. Went down to Old Trafford. And oh, was, that a, was that the one that they battered us, didn't they? Aye, 3 0. 3 0, game. Aye. 3 0, aye. Um, but we played reserves, played their reserves at the cliff beforehand. Aye. Yeah, yeah. And I. <laughs> so my mate was in Nets from Man United from Belfast, Connor Devlin, and we threw one on one, lobbed them, went away. The ball just trickling, and I'm away celebrating. And whatever bounce it took, it bounced, hit the post, I'm away. And within a minute, I went to make another run and went, Whoa, I don't like that. There was a, a, a sharp, sharp pain from the background of my groin, and uh, tried to run it off. And uh, like, nah, or something. I was up there like 15, 20 minutes. Had to come off. And last ever time I played for Celtic was that two and a half years later of trying injuries, everything else. But within a year and four months, look at that ended up being my last game. And I always look but if I had a good what, what year was that? 2008. 2008. So I'd say like things were going well up the reserves, pushing some training first team the other time. Um, I remember one of that's funny, like the fan, it may go back to that. Just before that, I remember training and playing again. Steve McManus and John Kennedy were playing uh center half in a training game. And I remember being scared to go near John Kennedy <laughs> in case I in case I injured him. Mm-hmm. It's like Jesus, he's been back, the first team need him. Like we're still at that time, we're struggling centre halves. <laughs> there's, um, there's a fan again, and you because like, did, you see any other one wouldn't have cared. He, like, I'm stupid, stupid. Like, stupid, stupid. It didn't help me. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's they're probably going. Oh, he's he's probably scared a big, big candle, big lad. Uh-huh. I was just genuinely like, Jesus, if I hurt his. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> I can still have that vision of that and just going. Oh, why? But. Anyway, that was all around that time, but things were looking okay, as I said. Uh, I was going in the right direction, and that happened. And they tried again a couple of months rehab, 
three or four injections and then they said, uh, you need a hip operation. Got a hip operation, a right hip. Got tested by the club doctor within two days of a hip labral tear reconstruction. That ruined the, the operation, that test. Um, had to get it done again. I'm so, I'm so, so, sorry, I'm totally ignorant when it comes to these type of things. The, my, my, that pain, uh, the best way I can describe it is someone stabbing you in the groin repeatedly. Right, they, they, that's the best, the only way I used to be able to describe it, on both groins. So both, both, at that stage, it was both, it was agony. Um, and God, I remember going up and down to England, getting injections and stuff, and trying all the different rehab, and like, right, listen, we're not the operating this hip. That's causing your groin pain. I said, the first one didn't work for one reason or another, and they had to go back in again about six weeks later, fix the damage that had been done from the first one and the test in between. Didn't make a difference, still all the pain in the world. About three months after that, it says, oh, we actually need to do your other hip. That hip will counteract the pain you're having mm -hmm. on the other one. They're compensating for each other. Didn't make a difference. Um, and that's the age of the pain had actually just been getting worse and worse. Um, and, and, and also mentally, you must have been close to uh, breaking now. I was kill. I genuinely was killing me, like, mm. um, and that's when your homesickness and you're you're like I was 17, 18 at that time. You're away from home, like literally. You're you're seeing then you you're seeing players. You probably don't think are as good as you, or weren't as advanced as you, mm. or now progressing. And you're you're jealous but happy at the same time. Like, oh, definitely. You're, your mates, you're like, yo, but don't. And there's probably other ones have said it. There's not a player out there who wants to see someone replace him and go, fuck. No, no, but I hope he's a hat trick. Today. That's the nature of you. That's, that's not, but that's life. That's life. That's no just fuck. But that's, I mean, we all want everybody, we all want everybody to do well, but we don't want I, them to do well at my I, life. I mean. No, 100%. And I, I was, I was struggling. I remember like going, this is my fourth operation or something at this stage. I'm in actually 10 times worse pain than I was before these operations started. Oh, um, so, I think it got, it got the stage where, this was from a year, from 2008 to October 2008 to October 2009, all these operations, and I genuinely think I had about eight or nine injections as well, and nothing. I said, I was actually getting worse as it got on. And they're like, what were the what were the injections? Just pay, painkillers or like? I got no. They were they weren't they weren't just cortisone. There was two on my pubic bone, so the oh. sort of thing could be osteitis pubis. Mm -hmm. Um, got two injections there. Um, didn't horrendous. Actually, I would take an operation over them again. Really? Oh, I trained down the leads. For a guy to go, that's a bone, you can feel the scraping around your bone with a needle. Oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, even the thought of it now. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> coming back here. <laughs> <laughs> being back up to Glasgow, uh, I, and I was just, I, I remember just being fed up. And then that old thing where, like, I remember Chris McCart, it's in your head. And I'm going, that's not the fucking head. Like, don't don't start this. Like I have a fucking chair at the side of my bed to get out of bed every morning. It's hardly in my head. When it's... when you hear stuff like that, I suppose as a young man it would make you more angry. But did you get a feeling at that point that they were kind of gearing up on you? Yes, and yes and no because they even I hadn't played at one stage in about. 10 months and they give me another contract right okay right so four operations there's still something there right okay and they, they always like the new was basically if you can get yourself like we know there's something there and then after another operation and still not getting any better he started quoting you're, you've cost us X oh. per goal since you've joined this club you've trained 
X amount of days and compared to what your wages, which were fucking nothing for a club of Celtic, um, throwing these quotes at me. I was like, Is this Chris McCall? Ah, um, and I was like, right, whatever. Um, and I would were never, Jack you, Finley, you, you never talk, answer back. Never uh, were you sure. talking to your dad at this point? What was your dad saying? No, you should, I, I wouldn't. No, I, you I kept wouldn't. it yourself. I, I knew. He's my he, bustle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, and I, 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 I would like, I would just be like, no, that's not. I'm an adult. That's for me to deal with. I'm not going to be right. the say He said this and he said that. Like, who, would you, who, would, who would you have been rooming with? I live, I, I live with Danny Lafferty you know, for the first year. Mm-hmm. And then a wee guy came over from a young 14, Paul George. You probably heard Paul of him George as well. Too, yep. so, as well eh? But he, his family are, he's from Clock, right. which is like... Well, he was very highly rated. Like, very highly oh, rated. He, he was flair. Like, was he no a ball heat though? No, as you know, I, I heard it was just ad- adapting. Aye, 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 aye. No comment. Um, <laughs> I see that you never see that. I see it. <laughs> um, I, very talented. Um, just yeah, yeah. Um, the people I live with, Robert Wilson and Kathleen Wilson, they were brilliant as well. They were very good with me. Um, and Paul then moved in and. Before Paul was very young and he was a fa- image, I know it's an immature fifteen year old. So right. it was a big boot for him as well, and he did struggle with homesickness and all the talent in the world. But I, he made a lot of things get to his head probably. Mm-hmm. Um, at I, times. Just, I was just wondering what what soundboard you had because you, you'd know even be, you'd know even better now at thirty one, and, yeah. and I know certainly forty two. You need somebody to talk to. I mean, that, this is what we're all saying in the world. You need yeah. somebody to talk to. And I can imagine being a young guy at that point, bravado, yeah. you were getting shot on by the club, you were in agony. It must have been fucking a, a bad, was, bad time, man. It was. And there was a wee guy, brilliant guy. And I I don't know how I ended up, but Gregor Kyle, Celtic Few journalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant wee guy, he did Celtic TV. Ended up friendly with him and Davy Freel. Um, who were also Celtic journalists, a few, Celtic few journalists. Um, we, we, Angie, in the, the kit room. Um, the likes of them, we talk, because without, like, I would never cause a bit of bother. Like, genuinely, and that's, I think, what annoys me more than anything. They knew that I would never be cheeky or answer back or cause any sort of bother. Um, and, so I get on well with all them and the physios and the other injured players like J- Jamesy as well. Jamesy had two. Of the, me and Jamesy got a hip operation the same day together, so we did a lot of our rehab together. And um, Charlie Grant, Cy Furry, Nicky Rayleigh. The list is endless of the amount of people mm-hmm. had injuries who. Break, Char- break Charlie, break. Charlie Grant never really got over has he ended up playing and. In- the same amateur league I used to manage him. I think he played for Blantyre. Blantyre Celtic. 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 He was a manager as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Charlie's a brilliant fella. Um, but Charlie had a lot of groin injuries like me and was crippled, absolutely crippled and shafted on as well, if I'm honest with you. Um, I, it was a struggle. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, I, I, I struggled. But that sort of... You don't want people back home to think that you're struggling. So you want to you don't want to worry them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm grand. No, listen, it is what it is. I'm still here. Blah blah blah. And there is part of it was if I had been at another club, it would have been ten times worse. But the fact that it was, I'm still a Celtic player. I'm still able to go and see your heroes every day. You're still going about Celtic coming away every week, mm-hmm. or possible made it a lot easier probably. Uh, I, I, I never, th- when, when I was reading your story, I never thought about it that way because we've got a thing over here that if Celtic want to employ you and they know you're a Celtic fan, they're going to take, they're going to cut your wages because they know Which, you'll come. Right? Yeah, so so no, you know no, your no. situation. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, but I, I, I never flung it in the other way that you've still got that benefit of being at your club, being within the walls. Yeah, gone, gone. Yeah, so I suppose I never even thought that's a good point. That, that, that that's the one thing I would say that did. If, if it was West Ham and you're in London, where you're just another number. Just a like, at least, I, what I love about Glasgow and the Glasgow people, half of them, 
is that they're mm-hmm. they're friendly and they're very similar to the Belfast. Hundred percent. Hundred. We're very similar. It was the same crack. Um, and I, I would say that probably did help a lot compared to if you were somewhere in Middle England or London. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I can remember getting sent around to every specialist under the sun. Uh, ended up at Wellington Hospital beside Lord called Roger Woolman. This is about six. This is March twenty ten, probably. He goes, uh, "Where's your look through the the pile of notes?" This says, "Where's your uh, where's your back scan?" I said, "I've never got an MRI on my back. I've got an X ray." And there's a lot of club, I don't know much you can really go, but there's a lot of club politics at the time between the medical team guy, Derek McCormick, club doctor, and a few of the physios and the club doctor, the only club doctor I ever know that run on the pitch when a player was injured. I, if you look back at matches, you always see him running on to the pitch with no other clubs, just the physio used to run on, unless it was a head injury. Yeah. The doctor runs on. Um, and he's a, he, he wasn't a football man, he was a different, nice guy, but just but he, he was arguing with the physio, there's nothing wrong with my back. The physio, to be fair, and I am at the time, like, no, I think there is an issue. The amount of lower, he's got back pain and lower limb pain, whatever. No, x-ray showed nothing. So they're like, and the doctor like, told you, nothing wrong with his back. It's his hips and his groins, whatever. So guy, Roger Woolman, says, let's go and get an MRI of your back right now. So he took, it's a private horse, whatever, they took you around, done the MRI scan, he says, let you know in a week or so. And they rang me, well, rang the physical club, and the two slip discs, and in layman's terms, it's like two two broken bones at the back. Um, there's a big there's a big technical term for it, but um, that's what it was explained to me in layman's terms. And that's why you're in so much pain, and that's been causing, so you're either going to, what they had to do was try and replicate the pain. So they put uh, a load of dye into that area of the back that was affected to see if that brought the groin pain on. And I shot up off the, once they put that into the back, I shot up with the groin pain. So that I guess it's definitely causing your groin. Um, but this, this, two, this was basically two years in the line. Yeah. 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 Um, and to see, to see, honestly, see from that December, the the dreaded Tony Mowbray season. That was that <laughs> season. And from January, February onwards, um, all I all my, my thing every day was Paddy Paddy lived in the corner. I, the digs I was in was in Burst End. Paddy lived in the corner. Would pick me up. Very nice. Oh, no, I listen. <laughs> 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 there is positives and uh, brought me to the Lennox town I am then got my breakfast got a massage walk around the pool went up played pool got my lunch got home because they couldn't they said like there's nothing there's nothing else you can do this is so for every day that's that's what I was doing for months um, I'm taking painkillers and at 18 years of age with a fucking I remember like a, a real at this stage a real to say to my bed to help me get up out of bed. Oh, that's, um, that's amazing, man. And I then Celtic were terrible that season, which didn't help into the bargain. And uh, and then finally transfer back a few months again. And like, yeah, you're going to need spinal surgery. So my contract was up at this stage as well. And Lennon was caretaker manager. Mm-hmm. So when all this came out, um, it was my back, and I can remember McCart had said uh, that must have just happened during your rehab in the last. I don't know. So that was because he knew he had said to me it was in my head, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then realised in between all this, that contract that I said they had offered me, there was a potential termination after six months if I hadn't got back playing. But so they brought me into a, meet, a, a meeting, just me and my own head, and McIntyre maybe, Tommy McIntyre, and said, uh, Night, be careful, the cameras are on you. Bit of joking, Jay, blah, blah, blah. But 
are you going to guarantee us that you'll do everything you can to to get back playing? Uh, yeah, like why would I? <laughs> why would I not? Um, and like, okay, we'll not terminate this date. We'll give you the rest of the season. We'll see what happens. Then that's when all this started to happen. Found out about the back blah, blah, blah. So I remember, and to be fair, I was struggling mentally at this stage. Um, really, just the pain was just getting me down more than anything. And going and speaking to Lennon, and he he was he was burning with me at the start. No, he says, "Listen, I've been there." Do this, try that. If you need anything, I'm here for you. Blah blah, hundred percent, brilliant. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, when it happened, they found out the back going to need spinal surgery, and every brought me in the room. Stevie Woods was just around the corner, and he brought me into another wee room and said, uh, "Listen, we're going to sort you out. We we fucked up here. Two year deal. Get yourself secure." Leave it with me and I'll look after it. And I won't burn it. And he goes, because I was meant to stay the Glasgow end of the season was another week. He says, if you want to go home early, you can go home early. There's no need for you to be here. We'll sort all that out. Um, Grant. And it, but it was the time of the ice. Do you remember the ice cloud? And you couldn't fly. Yeah. And so the last game of the season was away at Tencastle. The league was already over. This dot, but I was like, oh, fuck, I'll stay. I'll get the boat. Last game away in Pen Castle, Sing C scored a cracker that day, I think, one through one. Mm-hmm. And I remember staying, staying for that and then going home and thinking all's good in terms of like, I know I'm getting massive spinal surgery, but I'm going to be looked after in some sort of secure way. Mm-hmm. And I, I just did have the, an agent who was Jerry Carlyle. And Jerry, then after a few weeks, like, I'm not getting good faves here from these. There's something Peter's not answering calls, blah blah blah. And and then he says they want to come over for a meeting with the head of HR, guy called Mike Hayes, uh, the club doctor, Peter Lawwell, and Chris McCart. Right down. Um you're not setting me many friends in that room, are you really? <laughs> so we we flew, me, my dad, Jerry, flew over and it was all, it was the most staged, the more I look back, it was so staged. And I came in, the Euros, it was World Cup 2010, was on time, you're chit chat, nuts about that. And the club doctor, who was only temporary at that stage because your boy McCormick had uh, left. Um, and that left is in the further commas as well. And he was a nice man, David. What was his second name? I can't write. He was a nice man. He was only really a temporary doctor. Now. And he brought me into the room with my dad and says, um, and this was a week before I was due to get my surgery, sorry. And said, uh, listen, I've just been off the phone with Tony Reese, who was a surgeon. Um, he was doing it in the Nuffield. You're never gonna have. You're never gonna play football again. And, and to be fair, I knew that was a possibility. Like that major, I've already had, already been out for two odd years, mm-hmm. six operations, numerous injections, and then I had to get two metal rods put up my spine. So mm-hmm. I knew that was a very distinct possibility. Um, and we just don't think there's any chance you ever. And if you do, it'll only be more or less like five or eight type stuff that you really back on. But that's up. That's that's my face to the club after speaking. I was like, grand. Like, obviously, not nice to hear. So I then came back out. I still remember it's in, it's in on, you go in sell the court, first room in your left, on trainer's office was there, manager's office was there. It's like an open enough room. And by the way, Lowell didn't turn up as expected. I didn't I didn't never thought he would have. Because like I have nothing in the grand scheme of things, um, but just the fact that they said, "Oh, he'll be there," um, and then Chris McCart grabbed us and was like, "You hear what the doc has to say there." So on that note, we can't, uh, we can't. The two years that Lenny made us say it, like that, that can't happen. Um, but what we will do is we'll look after you for a couple of months. We'll give you your physio, and if you want, at that stage, sorry. I'd start doing some work with the Celtic Few as well. Just right, okay. Match reports. Um, 
I've been, been a couple of Celtic shoes with my names on reports and stuff, um, and doing bits and pieces for the programs and stuff. Just in case, because I did know that I potentially couldn't play anymore, so I started doing bits and pieces. Like, we might be able to get you into look to do something with the Celtic shoe, but from the sport side of stuff, you you you'll be done with the, that. Right, but we'll look after you. Oh, right. So. Do you remember at that stage they did like a, a road show? Mm hmm The dog and pony show, as we call it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so the whole like uh, look after you ended up being a, I got offered, so, uh, something came out in the post and it's basically a couple of months wages saying this, you can never sue us, you can never speak about your time at Celtic and... That's that dog, basically. A like, non-disclosure form. But what, what age are you fucking? 19? 19. 19. <laughs> um, that, that's scandalous, isn't it? That's, I mean, take, take yourself out of the situation. That's scandalous, man. Uh, and, and do you know what? <sighs> See, if you go and speak to Bubble Baldy, you go and speak to Charlie Grant, you go and speak to a lot of other people, there's a lot what? out there. That big, big, See Big Bubble in particular? Big Bobo was shafted beyond mm. belief. And see if people knew what state Bobo was in. Horrendous. I, I, I remember a story. I remember a story at the time that kind of showed that his mental health. But I don't know. I say like fans seem to think that if you're getting paid, you're taking you're take money out of their pocket sometimes in your life. Oh, no, no, no. I, but, but, but people like Bobo was sent down, was barred from Lennox Town and came and, and was the nicest, best guy in the world, looked after all the kids. When he was here, he had to come and train right. with the kids. Um, you in contact with him? No, no, <laughs> no. Jeez, big boy. But he was a brilliant fella. Um, down to earth, no nonsense. Um, but the state he was left in, oh, uh, it's not, my, it's not my place to say. It's not my place to say, but... Not nice. And, and your opinion, it's bad. Aye, aye. There, 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 genuinely, there's no opinion about it. Like his mental, which led to physical, it wasn't good. Um, and just, there's loads like that. And then, so the road show happened. And <laughs> I got the surgery, sorry, a week before. And I said to the surgeon, can I ask you a question? What was the full report you gave to my club doctor about me not playing again? Like, and I went, What are you talking about? And I said, Well, the club doctor informed me that he had a conversation with you and you had said you'd never, he goes, I would never say stuff like that. I've oh. never. <sighs> my dad then goes mental again. Oh, well. um, and then the next, so I got the surgery, it was in the enough field for about a week, I was able to fly home. Um, but that was me. I wasn't wouldn't have been able to work in any normal job. Never mind a football for about eight nine months at that stage. That's it. So um, you were you weren't making that much money at that mm. age to do you for more than I like, got a, a few quid put away. But that was for me a while. And if I had assigned this, which they knew, they would have known. I had assigned that three month wages, whatever it was that they offered. It would have secured me for a good wee while. Non disclosure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and the roadshow happened. That I was obviously recovering at home, and my uncle Jim, who I spoke about earlier, um, went to it uh, with my dad. And my dad would have been too angry. So my uncle Jim asked the question um, a Peter Law, well, and Lennon, and about how what's the procedure for injured players, young players who've but more or less, give my suggestion without saying my name. And Lana, listen, I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, this was in Lurgan, this one. I think right. you're talking about I, myself. And he goes, uh, we know how much and all this nonsense. Um, and there was a bit of to and fro by all kinds. Obviously, it wasn't our second hand. And he just said, my dad, listen, come speak to me afterwards and I'll sort this out. Uh, so Lennon spoke to my dad after the home. Listen, I'll get Dagen a ring during the week. This isn't on. We'll sort this out. Um, I've yet to ever hear from him again. <laughs> like, like my, my argument to I don't Neil Lennon still wasn't permanent. I don't think at this stage. 
So I would not expect him to, for me, and nobody in the grand scheme of things, it's like put himself out of a potential first team job on a point of principle. For me, like I'm not naive or daft enough. But other people, maybe more, I think you're the older generation. If you give someone their word, or there's contradictions all the time. I get all that. Um, so he's not like the man. <laughs> but, but then, let's um, be brutally honest about it, right? and, and I don't mean to do you any disservice here, but it's not as if you were costing the earth, were you? No, I mean, well, like, well, to, that, that, to, I to, to, look, to look after you for two years through this was, process was nothing. With, with peanuts to sell it. And, I, and, 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 and your your whole family and your Celtic support would have praised the club to the high heavens, oh, and they couldn't have they couldn't have bought that much good press. Fuck's sake! I, I I remember like Paddy Paddy McCourt always going like, "This is what what is this?" Like uh, I remember him. He goes, "I'm speaking to people that like," and I'm not I'm not wrong, but like I would have been an angel in terms of like. Didn't drink until late, like never genuinely called. No, I was actually going to ask you that. I was going to do the side ferry. <laughs> we, 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 I know a drinker, no? I, I didn't start drinking until about three months before I left Scotland. Right, okay. Because it was like, I, I thought I want to be a professional footballer. Mm-hmm. Now, I would have gone out the whole time. I oh, would have been in the club, but like, I, would never, I wouldn't have drank. Um, and it was more like, fuck this. Like I'm, <laughs> you know, um, and I started, but at that stage I was I was racked. Um, injury was, and it is just that I was always clean, and I would have always gone and worked at the games in the dressing room to clean the boots, and put the the pants out, and do the washing with John Clark and all that stuff, and would have considered myself to be well reared, mannerly, uh, yeah, and never, yeah. and. People say that goes against you sometimes in terms mm-hmm. of like, advantage, you, yeah. And they knew you were Celtic mad, so they probably thought, listen, he'll say that, don't he'll never sue try and sue us. Like, um, and then we obviously knocked back that non disclosure form. So, so that, that decision, that decision, right? Again, as an 18 or 19 year old man. That's a big decision to make. So are you at this point leaning on your dad and Jerry now at this point? Um, potentially, is this, yeah. is, this, is this honestly your decision? Nah, fuck this, I'm not taking this. Because you sure have been through all the pain, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit, of, a bit of everything, to be honest with you, without trying to give a wishy-washy answer. Like, um, mm-hmm. Not any problem. But there, there is yourself... There's part of me going, I remember going, like, I just couldn't be arsed with this. Like, I really don't, I've had enough of it the last couple of years. And then um, loads of people were going, especially people within Saudi were going, like, you can't accept being treated like that. Like, that's no, good. good. And, as I, and that was people within the club and players and staff who knew the type of fella that it was, that, like, they're shitting on you here. Because they know, probably think you're too soft. To, mm-hmm. um, and and then I got someone put me in touch. Said, "Go and speak to this solicitor in Dublin." So he was a famous solicitor, and in, in for comes again. He was Bono and Westlife and whatever. And someone said, "Listen, he'll love this potential case mm-hmm. because celebrity, blah blah blah." But he couldn't practice in in the UK as such. And but he he like the fact he was listen, for me, medical negligence here is clear, but I'm not a medical expert. And through the whole process, we had two two doctors, specialists, one from Dublin, one from England, um, who wrote massive reports explaining more or less this is madness that this was allowed to go on for so long. This guy's wasn't able to, like, wasn't diagnosed for this length of time. Um, he then put me in touch with a, a solicitor in Glasgow because he couldn't practice. Um, the whole reports went through. There was massive money paid for the reports, to be honest with you, and all ready to go to court. And then someone in the club who still actually works there uh, in a quite prominent role said to me, um, was aware and was backing me all the way and just said, listen, they will take this to the last day. They'll pull every shit 
hosiery tactic possible in the hope that you pull out, they'll drag it out, and then maybe on the day, they'll not go into court and they'll settle outside. Right? That was someone inside the club who I was friendly with was trying to keep me right the whole way. He says, but be prepared for every tactic under the sun. Um, and about a year into all this report and ready for the court potential case, the solicitors in Glasgow pulled out. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? And the person, the name of the solicitor was the former name of a hunger striker and definitely wasn't a Rangers fan either. And I can remember just going like, this stinks. This genuinely stinks. Oh, okay. And away. then, I, I can't say, but there's another fella who was in a legal case. Something similar happened to him where the solicitors pulled out, but there was a whistle blower along the line in that solicitors, and he ended up getting compensation from the club and a solicitors. That was a, a disclosure. There was a disclosure form signed there. Um, but I'm not saying that happened with me, um, but something wasn't right. If um, and I, I, at this stage, I was genuinely covered. I went back to university at this stage, but I was covered in head to toe in psoriasis with the stress. Um, had gone to a few games still. The ma has never set foot back in Celtic Park since, mind you, on a point of principle. Um, and she would have gone to games with us as well. Um, and I had gone over to a few games still because I couldn't. You miss, you miss it and I remember coming home just being on a downer for a long time afterwards because I was just getting at you um, and I made a conscious decision not to go for a me right I'm not going to tell this is over because it, it's not doing me any good mm-hmm. um, and then I got to the stage where I said cover stresses and I just went this isn't worth it like honestly no I really I don't I don't care enough anymore right. I might and I remember like the solicitor what, says, what, what were you doing what were you doing personally at this point I mean so I had, I had gone to do a degree in Georgetown in sports science um, university. Right. So I was studying and was working part time um, in a restaurant and trying to get back fit. This is a few years after being told you could never play games, trying to get back fit. And yeah, I just want this isn't worth it. And I, I'm out of the solicitors to be fair said to me, listen, there's a higher chance that you're going to win this case. And you could get probably the maximum they said you get probably three quarters of a million, right? Based on she had to get reports from different coaches, predictions, blah blah blah, X amount of years. But if you don't, you're in serious legal. Oh, 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 geez, man. So yeah, they, they have to tell you either. Uh, or anyway, like, um, so anyhow, that's that, but there, and then there was a case could I get legal aid and all there was a load of nonsense going on. And I, I remember just going, Listen, I don't want anything to do with this anymore. I really don't care enough. Mm-hmm. I'm grand, like, I'm healthy as enough. I'm going to university, I'm going to do this. I'm grand. Listen, well, I'm moving on. It. It's, it's like, like, there's no point holding a grudge. I, I'm at like it's dumb. So, I, I after once they sent that. Letter out saying that they were withdrawn from the case, and they were like go and get another. And I went, I, I, I did. It was just me. Like people said, no, you need to go and speak to him or her. And I went, no, it's done. Like I, I, I've had enough. Like, and they're like, but that's what you were told. That's what they want you to do. I, mean, I don't care. Like I genuinely oh, don't care. It's done. Oh. Um, and. And I was coming back to try and play. I was thinking, I'm doing all right. Rehab was going well after a few years. Because it was about two years post-back operation, maybe. Uh, or a year and a half, two years. And um, the banger thing was a joke. Guy from the Gilly Club. <laughs> My Gilly Club. Same club. Berlin fella. Berlin fella. I said, listen, um, I'm, he was manager. He goes, I need, I need something to give me a lift. Give, mm-hmm. He was under pressure. Do us a favour, saying, come and train with us, 
couple of months and Bangor were low down like and I would never have had any don't mean this disrespect like when they were going to get back I was like I'm not going to I wouldn't want to think I could play at that level and so I did and I went and trained a couple of times and it wasn't from it just wasn't wasn't for me to be honest with you and and then went to Cliftonville um, and Cliftonville were top of the Irish league at that stage actually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're doing, and I signed as an amateur for Bangor, by the way. Like, it was no, I wouldn't take, wasn't taking anything off them because I knew it wasn't full on. And then head back to fit. I played for Clinville, hadn't played at the stage in five years, probably. Um, and the adrenaline first training session, I was really, must have done really well. And the manager got rest, and Tommy Bresson says, Jeez. You're for, a lot further on than the thought fitness was. Do you want to start the Irish Cup on Saturday? Right, the thing. Last at about 50, it must be the only player after three minutes you were getting a drink of water. And I couldn't walk for about three days after January. <laughs> in, in agony, but back, my groins. Right, right. So, wasn't it just, I, I just was the unusual. I, ah, right. And I remember going to see there's a specialist here. Um, and I booked in to see him, Michael Cullen, and he just says, what are you doing? You're not, you're not able. Your body's not able to play at this uh, level. Right, okay. Um, and that was January, and I tried to see, I think I could play one more game. I remember taking painkillers to try and play one more game, and every day was just... No, no. And so I remember speaking to the club doctor, the club well, and they're just like, That's it's, your, your body's not you've you put your body through too much at this stage at my hips because I got a scan my hips were sore and my hip my hips now I'm gonna need replacement hips mm-hmm. at some stage shortly enough like um and like if you continue to try and even play through this prior like you're not gonna be able to walk at a uh, young age yeah. like you're going you to do like, your yeah, do your real hard and for for being in pain every day your life never mind just trying to play football and every so I then had to retire again uh, at that stage but I was 2012 13 or something um and that was that yeah um and then graduated was going to be a PE teacher said don't want to be a teacher anymore went to like a postgrad and some sort of like violence terrorism and security and now, <laughs> I know obviously uh, as, you do, <laughs> as you do and uh work for an IT company now to do and get to travel the world and stuff. So um you were doing coaching though for a bit, were you not? I flat out Gale, I'm I'm the senior football manager for McGillie Club. Right, okay, brilliant. Um Lav York, so I'm doing that and I did I was coaching a senior for two divisions below the Irish League called Magalada. I was in doing a bit of coaching with the manager there for old friend Brew McCaw and I tried to coach with Clinton initially after I had to stop there. Mm-hmm. They were brilliant with me to just come and coach. And I was I genuinely was killed. I couldn't I couldn't cope. Right. I uh, I'll be honest with you. I remember going and going, this is doing me more it's worse than actually they were trying to do me a favor, keep you part of the mm-hmm. and stay involved in the game. Nah, it was killing me. Genuinely going wow. and watching people play and trying to coach, and at that stage, just like nah, I can't do this. Like it was, I was coming home worse because it was frustrating the life out of me that I couldn't. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get involved in football coaching for a few years. Did a bits and pieces with the IFA and got the badges. I've been doing some recently as well with Gail, but it took me a long time to get over. Mm-hmm. To get over different models, with you like? Yeah, um, no. Nah, the hypocrite in me got the season tickets back about six, seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still back and forward as much as I can. Like, but, but, um, but we support the jerseys. We don't support... Well, as much as we support the guys in them, it's the jerseys we support as a club. We, like we, we can't even excuse you for individuals. Exactly. And that's why I... Like, I remember like this argument trying to say, like, why I've loved Celtic way before... I was before they there, that happened, right? There, I'm not, that brings me so much joy. 
why should I not? Why should I deny yourself? So, there's something, what? there's something brilliant, and there's something absolutely mental at the same time. <laughs> the amount of people like about go, why the fuck do you set food back in that place? Uh, and you're like, it, it, see, unless you're Celtic fun, you understand. Yeah. Would be my, would be my best way of trying to describe it to them. So you'd have been yeah. outside parking the breaking down the fences, that I was in the short. No. So, uh, yeah. so, uh, so football wise, you think you're you're kind of done with football now? I play them with Jesus. Well, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, just just in general, because I, mean, like, cause I, I, I was th- I was thinking you were saying there when you were doing a bit of coaching. So you're doing a bit of coaching with, with the guy team. You're the, you're, the, you're the man, yeah. I'm doing football. I'm doing football. Right, right okay. Yeah, but, yeah. And, the, um, and, and how are you feeling with that? Is, is that something that you think, give me another couple of years, get my hips sorted and all that, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll maybe try and... Because your experience, and obviously, and for talking to you, you sound like you've got a head for football, so... Um, I don't know, but... but no, I do, but my job, at the minute, to be honest, is quite good. Um, right. and it would be a big risk to come away from what I'm getting now and what I'm doing now mm-hmm. to go in for a time now the gas stuff's high enough level to be honest with you um, and I, I, I with it like in terms of like every day it consumes my life like mm-hmm. um, it, I get married here in a couple of months and this is always says there's, there's Celtic there's Lamb Dirk and then there's her <laughs> like that's, that's, that's the three, the three things. Um, and the soccer was Macalada. Um, I said they're top of the trying to think like the juniors would be the top league in the juniors, right? Okay, so this is like decent, a decent team, yeah. Like that, a good, good bunch of players. We, we came second, they're unlucky last year in the league. Um, so that's starting back shortly as well, pre season. So, um, I was a lot in the plate. Um, and I do, I do love it, like, but I've had. A few been unlucky with a, a couple of sort of not benign brain tumors the last couple of years, and I've had a couple of hemorrhages of the brain, so I've been in the of hospital a lot. Um, I, I was going through. I like radio- hug here. <laughs> <laughs> I, was going through, I was going through radiotherapy and stuff there for it. So oh, mate, um, that's stopped some elements of the coaching as well because. Like I'm, you're on medication and stuff, and it's because I am so obsessed at times. <laughs> it can have that health as well, just the stress levels, as you spoke about earlier on. Um, just trying to get that balance between everything. Like I can't sit at peace when I'm told to rest. That I find it difficult to sit. <laughs> so, so you're, I'll, I'll be out three, four times a week during the week, and then matches at the weekends. But I've had to. I think I'll have to take a step back for the next few months and get a balance right. Like, um, but other than that, like life's, life's good enough. You can't complain. There's people a lot worse off. Than me. Us, I, I um, think um, um, that's that's wild. That's a, that's some journey, man. I've, <laughs> I'd say I have really enjoyed speaking to you about it. I mean, the story. The story is. It gets to a point it's quite horrific, to be perfectly honest. Matt, Matt has always told me about it and he's always pushed me to speak to you. And yeah. I, I'm really glad I did. I'm really glad I did. Before, sure, we, before we finish off, yeah. you want to have a wee couple of minutes talking about Celtic then? So, so you're back oh. watching, right? This dismiss the guys in the suits. Let's talk yeah. about the man the man in the jumper. Are you enjoying um, it this weather? Oh, love it. Like, I was uh, I was over for the Jablonac game. Do you remember the first game of the full mm-hmm. crowd? Mm-hmm. Actually, actually won the ballot for the Michelin game. Right. I got in COVID. Couldn't remember. <laughs> I've won. Got fucking. I was grand, like, but couldn't go. And then the next game was the first for house Jabinac. And I remember you. I don't know if you were there, but I was, it was right? unbelievable that night. Like it was just Class. electric. Uh, and I think that's when you felt something could be built here. Um, and. I don't want to overestimate the job he's done, like and saying anything different. But we were a mess. Mm-hmm. COVID was depressing enough as it was without what was going. On. And I always tried to not personally, because I, I, 
I didn't think Neil Lennon was the man for the job first time or second time around. Um, and it was sort of like, was a wee bit personal for me. And he, the first season, he, he was very good. And then the second season, but where we were, uh, John, when John Kennedy, remember, we went to Rink Rangers, been us 4 1 or something. I have the, where do we go from here? And then the whole Eddie High saga. Mm-hmm. And then just the joy we've had this year has been unbelievable. Like, Why would that? Ugh. I've got over to about seven or eight games this year. Um, and it probably, again, I was really starting in the way my brother and my dad, Tommy Burns teams, in terms of the floor and attack, it's probably the best football mm-hmm. is them. Mm-hmm. Um, I still think we need another centre half, Wanyama type midfielder. Um, I, think everybody, every, I think everybody's in agreement with the Wanyama one, but I just um, I don't know if that's what the man's looking for. <laughs> I think he's looking for the other. And that's true. Well, that's what I like. I like about him to a certain degree in that. Yes, I remember Rogers didn't in the Champions League. It was in Barcelona some of the times. Like you're gonna beat seven one six nil, and on just something similar. Like this is how we're gonna play. Um, yeah. Well, but, that fear, that fear is sitting right there. Uh, Grit this uh, Champions League. <laughs> 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 and the part of me does admire that, but I do think he will be slightly more pragmatic than Rogers was. I think Rogers' ego had him that I'm going to go and show the world that mm-hmm. I can play this type of football with Celtic. I, my, I can I, do it. Not yeah, no, I we mean, can yeah, do it. I I can do it. I, look at I've done where I think on. And you can see like defensively, they've been quite good in terms of. Limited chances. You want. I, I know we're up one into the XG um, stuff with all the boys. That, that's that's, that's <laughs> still that for the home boys. You've obviously uh, never listened to the home boys. They're, they're <laughs> <still> <laughs> for us. Um, they, they haven't. The amount of chances that have been created against Celtic have actually been quite low, uh, and compared to others, it's just is that fear. I think we're too small without going Gordon Strachan on us as well. Set pieces, we can be. Well, the, uh, the irony you saying that is we got better and better and better at the set pieces defensively last season, despite yeah. as you say having a team. I mean, even even Bernabe, but he's fine. I hate that. That's like that's testament to sort of that he has his attacking philosophy, mm-hmm. but he still knows how to set up knows defensively. How to set up. Exactly, exactly. Um, what, what height are you, incidentally? Six foot, bang on. Six foot, bang on. Yeah. So no, what do you think for this season? See, see that season you're talking about under Neil Lennon. We were on the show, right? So we've done the shows all the way through, it and and there's there's only so much you can talk about how shit you're doing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and um and but we kind of made a de- decision, right? We were going to criticise Celtic when they deserved it, and we're going yep. to celebrate Celtic when they deserve it. And see, right now, if you can't be totally delighted and over the moon with Celtic, you oh, want wow. to you want to give up, right? There'll, there'll be tough times down the line, but right now we've got our ducks in order well before we've got a pre season without any qualifiers. I was doing a wee fixture list today <laughs> in my work, I was doing a fixture uh-huh. list in my work, and I'm looking, I'm kind of going, We'll see if from the end of July through to the end of August, we've only got one game a week, and you're kind of going, And that, that's usually where you get fucking boom, 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 boom. Are you not, are you not missing? Like I, I, I was saying to the boys last week, I usually get excited because Celtic are coming back, even though it's the qualifiers that we're dreading. But the fact that there's competitive games, there is, there is a bit of that. There is a bit of that because see, friendly, friendlies will never recreate oh. playing Junis Desh or no. playing Reykjavik or playing yeah. Mitchell and stuff like that. Yeah. Because see, see, when I do it, like I said to you at the beginning, I do this room one on one, and I usually yeah. go and speak to the opposition. So I, I've yeah. spoke to like fans of Mitchell and I've spoke to or fans them. of yeah. Chaplin X and all that, and sit and talk to them about it. Yeah. And I'm not going to talk to anybody about fucking friendly. You know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, watched, I watched the first half last week, uh, 6 0 up at half time. Oh, no, yeah. Thank you. Switch off so, mentally. You might have it on, but you've switched off, haven't you? Aye. But at the same time as you say, walking into the Champions League without having to worry about beat on at centre half. Well, exactly. <laughs> well, you, 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 would you have played with uh, uh, Big O'Connell, Egan O'Connell? Oh, he had just, I'd just gone when he when came. He I mean, he played, yeah. cha- he played Champions he League. 
<laughs> Rogers first season away <laughs> in uh, Kazakhstan was it? Uh, he was right. up as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why you done it? No, I could all, it. Listen, if you, if you where we were there and the amount of, like I was in the League Cup final this year. Even I remember they won each game against the Huns. Where more or less we won, we had won the league. Yeah, yeah. the Pope back. Like Celtic fans, there's a element that's so negative, no matter what. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're talking you, about James Forrest. What about the guys who hate James Forrest, no matter what? And I'm just saying, they're on. And this is my, again, I'm going to my bugbears. There's players who play for Celtic who are cult heroes. They kiss the bads the odd time, or. <sighs> This is no use without names. No use without names. I know, I'm trying to think, like, even as much as I love, like, the reverence of Paddy, who I love the pieces, brilliant fella, is held by Celtic fans, right? And what a player. What a player. But James Forrest, Paddy's held in higher esteem than James Forrest. That's true, huh? And James Forrest is close to being a legend. Like James Forrest, I think it's three goals away from 100, 17, 18 major trophies. Uh-huh. Like, what, what, what I, I don't know what, I, I, I get he's frustrating sometimes, but break it down, he scores nearly 15 goals a season as a winger. <laughs> the, amount of assists, the amount of big semi final, final goals he scored. Uh-huh. Even last season, yeah. yeah. Remember he came back against Livingston, scored that? Yeah. Like Mr. Four. Johnson. St. So Johnson as well, the semi-final, he came off the bench, the League Cup semi-final, yeah. and scores. He, uh, away to Livingstone, we hadn't won X amount of games, he came on, he scored. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, that's just one example that you'll, you'll get me on a rant. Um, I've told you, <laughs> rants are encouraged, rants are encouraged. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you what, Dick, I've not, I've not heard you up much longer, right? But I'm going oh, to make yeah. this promise to you now. Yeah. I, think, I think you should come on the main show. Right, it's a Friday night. It's a Friday night, and admittedly, we start off talking about Celtic, but we have a beer, and uh-huh. you're more than welcome to sit with us. It'll be myself, yeah. Marty, and you, we'll just talk about Celtic, and you can get Pardon, yeah. say anything you want. So you're formally invited. Before I let you go, give me a story. Give me a funny story with regards to your football career. I know, I know, I'm drapping on you. Something, something. Inc- I don't, I don't care who it is or what level. Something, something to finish off with. Because I, I heard you saying. You were at Celtic at the same time as Tommy Gravis, and obviously oh. Cy, Cy Ferry's kind of covering that base. You've got Aidan McGeady, you've got Arthur Boric. I mean, you well, must have been... with the, the story of that Boric McGeady story you probably heard. Yes. With, uh, like, uh, I, I remember that. Um, were you there I at that rem- point? Yeah, I can remember McGeady getting, I was in the dressing room working as we used to, we had to used to work in the dressing room, but McGeady got suspended by right. Strachan. Um, I can remember that. Uh, big, do you know what? See, like Big Yan, just small, Big Yan fan, I go walking about singing Let the People Sing while he's in the shower. <laughs> I just drew, like... Perfect, perfect. You know, I just remember Celtic Park, they were training at the at Barfield and they were going for an away match. I just remember him, Natal, let the people sing. I go... <laughs> It's great. This is as well. Ah, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. I know there's loads more. Like our Mark, Mark Rosas is another Coltero rant that he was. He, he plays up to the gallery now. Like, but um, the, he gets held. But Tommy Gravison held once. That's one. So there used to be, for some strange reason, in Celtic dress there used to be like a samurai sword. Just I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I think it was like a. A presentation, no, from another club, but it just used to be knocking around Clarkie's room, John Clark's room. Um, and I remember one, uh, Gravison just, and I was lifting the socks up in the dirty boxers, whatever they were. His. All right, lad. And he grabbed me and had this, the samurai sword at the throat. I'm going to do it, lad. I'm going to do it, lad. <laughs> Ah, oh, I'm only joking, you lad. And a bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a maniac. But the nicest, nicest guy. Like, uh, you probably like, size told loads of stories about him. Nicest that's guy. That's brilliant, man. That's brilliant. Nicest guy ever. <laughs> and, and my last final thing, do you keep in touch with anybody? 
I, I would say, I say, say the boy Danny Laffer you keep talking about. I mean, where was he from? He, he was, was he, yeah. he, he ended up because Mar Marty, Marty rated him really highly, and I just remember his name. He, he was before Danny was told he's getting released on in March. Two centre halves got injured. He had to come in. The two centre halves clashed heads. He had to come in. They were injured. Got a six month contract. Got another six month contract. Ended up coming back to Derry City and then played for Burnley, Sheffield United, Rotherham. Um, but no, Danny wouldn't keep with many in touch. Many something you maybe edit about why because. He owes a lot of people that, um, myself, <laughs> myself included. Um, but you inherit that, bit, right? Um, uh, I've just party now and again. The last time it's before, Jamesy got me sorted for Turin. Do you remember Turin away? Yeah. yeah. Um, we get let down the tickets, and I remember taxing him, and, and he got me sorted oh, last good, minute. For good. That. Like, um, to be fair, other than that, I'd say the people still who are there. Most of them are all gone. Mm -hmm. um, they're still at the club. All the people that I, I live with, Kathleen, Robert Wilson, Robert still works for the club. Fantastic. I'm still keeping regular touch enough with them. But um, no, I think that's... Yeah. I, I'm not good at keeping in touch either with people. But I think I spoke to Paul about three or four months ago, just texting, that was probably the last. And now, before now, McGinn was quite good lad with me as well. Like, um, I was quite friendly with him. used to... He used to take me out and look after me. Um, but I... Chill out. You, you remember that all your life, though, if people would do that. See if oh, somebody no. looks after you. And like, another another guy who maybe gets stick from Celtic fans, maybe not as much. Aidan McGeady's another one, gets stick on, on Julie. But Sean Maloney came to visit me in hospital a couple of times, brought oh, me... Good man. And used to, like, just that, that he's a brilliant fella. Genuinely nice person, brilliant man. guy. But, and he had no reason to do so. And um, we still every would have kept in touch. How's the back? How you keeping if you ever want to come across for everybody? He was a Wigan at that stage. Like, they, they're, like footballers get a bad uh, reputation at times, and a lot of it is justified. <laughs> but there's more there's more good that doesn't get uh, just we see would mean. To say young that again, say like, that, you, you broke up there. Say that again. Sorry, people, people, like something like that. Sean Maroney's doing that. People wouldn't understand how much that would mean to see someone. Yeah, yeah. Like himself. yeah. Or I can remember Steve McManus finding out I was mad. Thought big man, he had all these boots, and he came and he gave me about four or five pairs of boots. And I went, "We man, I know you'll you'll appreciate that. If you want to send them home, send them home. Like just be small things like that." Stephen McManus. I, I, so I was prime Celtic fan at that point. I was going home away to Europe when mm -hmm. him hoof and heed and <laughs> and I remember meeting him uh there, there was a thing called Carlin Conversations and Scott McDonald and Steve McManus yeah. came. Scott McDonald was an ass. Yeah. Ignorant and Stephen McManus. I remember coming away and I wouldn't let anybody slag him after that. Ah, I was like, see that guy man. that guy's an absolute ambassador for our club. An absolute ambassador I, I, and I still love him to this day because yeah, that. yeah. And he, and he does get a bit of stick, like that said in general, got a bit of stick. Mm -hmm. Like, and one three in a row, last 16. <laughs> <and 17 laughs> you twice. Know, twice. Like, fuck. And, and should have got the quarter final. Stonewall penalty at the San Zero tonight in the last minute. Down Day. That's right. Um, and yeah. handball, your header and your boy handballed it. Like, and um, your, your, your big pal, Gary. I remember I was at that game. Gary Colwell got the ball and ran the ball right out of the pitch. And I was stunned. I remember turning around going, how has he done that? He's just running around <laughs> right the pit. <laughs> well, good times, but good times. Are like, I was in South like a Canadian when we won the league that night. And I'll do mean that Tommy just like just class, class yeah. man. I don't know, listen, time was sard. Of but listen, like for you told me, like my mouth went and wrote my primary school books, like primary two, primary three. And all it is is me talking about how I want to play for Sheldon and reporting on Celtic matches that weekend. So you had to say to me there and then, listen, you'll, you'll do play that. for Celtic. Yeah, you'll not do what you want to do, but it's I've lived the dream that millions of people would have loved to and I appreciate it. Like, Fair dues, Dickie. Yeah. 
you're, you're a top man, top man. I've absolutely <laughs> loved it. I've loved it, mate. It's been brilliant. And I, 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 I reiterate, you're more than welcome to come on the main show with the boys. Um, Thank you very right, much. Appreciate so as I say, before we head out, is there uh-huh. anything you want to kind of promote? Or even if you're on social media, is there any, where, where can people follow you and see what you're up to? I, I'm, not, I'm not a big my social my Twitter viewer. I'm honest, probably just Celtic. I've tweeted about I've taken a, a backwards seat, but I, I'm only I'm don't do Instagram. I just don't, I don't get it. Um by the way, right, so so you're 10 years younger than me, and I thought uh-huh. it was just me. I've got Instagram, right? And I have uh-huh. no idea what the fucking hell these women <laughs> with big boobs keep appearing. And I'm like and I'm like, I've not even looked at it. What's happened? My missus is like, what are you up to? I'm like, fucking doing it. <laughs> I just, I just don't get, you just put photos up yourself. Like, I, for, it's not great, but I, I would have been on Twitter a lot. Um, I'm mainly Celtic GA and politics. It's taken a bit of, I'm not Love always, it. Love it. Um, oh, that's, they tell you so, don't talk about religion, politics, or football, and that's the three things I love talking about. <laughs> 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 right, so we'll, we'll finish it up there. Um, once again, thank you for taking quite a considerable amount of time out of your day. Um, good luck with your upcoming nuptials. Um, once thank again, you. thank you very much, mate. It's been, no, it's thank been you very much. Appreciate you asked me on. Pleasure. No problem.